Oh god, everything looks different now. <laughs> They've completely changed how everything looks in OBS. Also, hello everyone. Um, you might notice I sound a little different. I got a new microphone. I also have a pop filter now, so now if I do a P sound, it doesn't sound fucked up or something. I don't know what this shit does. Um, but hello everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I'm here. It's Tuesday. Welcome to tonight's stream. We're gonna be streaming some Pac-Man World Repack. Um, I feel like I was baited a little bit today. Um, right before this stream, I, I, I saw that the new Sonic song was supposed to have the F word in it. It was supposed to say fuck. I did, I, I listened to the song that Sega put out on the Sonic the Hedgehog channel. I did not hear a fuck word in it, and I'm real like I'm a I'm a little upset. I'll be honest, I'm a little upset. I thought it would be funny as all hell if they said fuck in Sonic the Hedgehog, especially because Sonic Frontiers is like probably just like rated E10. They're never gonna actually drop fucking Sonic, and it hurts so bad. That's why we needed T-rated Shadow the Hedgehog. If they, if they didn't come out with the E10 rating when they did, like, Shadow the Hedgehog could have said fuck. And that hurts the most. It really does. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be streaming Pac-Man World tonight. Um, I've been wanting to play this remake for, like, a, like a week now. It came out, like a week and a half ago, and I just did not have the chance to play it on stream. Like, it, 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 it. Well, I'm not gonna say anything, but... I, 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 I really want to play this game, because Pac-Man World is a PS1 game that I really like. It's definitely up there for one of my more, like, beloved PS1 games. You know, put that, put that up there with like Um Jammer Lammy, FF7, maybe below. Uh, it it would be below like FF7 and Um Jammer Lammy and LSD Dream Emulator, but I mean, other than that, like it's pretty good. I like it a lot. And I've always, I've always been a big believer that they should make more of the Pac-Man World games. Now, I know they made 2 and 3. I never got to play those. Um, but I... I wanna play... Like, I want them to make a new one. And I guess this is what we get. Have I ever played Klonoa? No, I have not. I have not played Klonoa. And when the Klonoa remasters came out, I almost bought them. And then I... What the fuck did I buy instead? I think I bought, like... I... That was the week I bought Sonic and the Secret Rings was the week Klonoa came out, because I was like, okay, but I'd rather play Sonic in the Secret Rings, because there's something horribly wrong with me. <laughs> I bought Sonic in the Secret Rings and Sonic in the Black Knight over Klonoa. To be fair, make beliefs reborn. But hello, Morgan. Hello, Reed. Welcome. Um, why don't we get started? Why don't we open up Pac-Man? Uh, we might be able to finish this in one night, honestly. Uh, if I just, like, don't run into any troubles playing this game. Because, like, according to how long to beat, this is, like, f a five-hour game. And, like, I could, like, I think reasonably, like, I could be up for, like, five hours. We're, we're starting the stream a little late tonight, but, like, I don't know. I ended Resident Evil 7 at, like, one in the morning, so it's fine. Dropping some frames, no. It's fine, it went back to normal. Whoa, wrong one. Yeah, but, like, look at how fucked up OBS looks now. How did this happen? Everything different now. I'm not used to it. I hate change. Ch make it back, go back. Uh-oh. I moved it slightly, and now it's not... The It went down. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. 
good start. For everyone watching on YouTube also, the stream was supposed to happen last night, but my internet was also, like, shitting itself then. Oh my god, is OBS doing that thing where it says attempting to reconnect and then you just can't? It says attempting to reconnect, attempt to... What the fuck? Oh, the attempts are much shorter now. Okay. It's also just not like not reading the adapter anymore in my computer. That's cool. That's awesome. It's reconnected, let's go. Reconnection successful. We're back. Oh my god, it's like, like this stream has like I think like just starting Pac-Man World Repack is probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do on stream. Like, I couldn't do it last night. I got the game, like, a week late. Game came out when I was, when I was like, still on hiatus. The, the, the world is conspiring against the pack. Like, look, now, now we got zero bit rate again. Come on! There's like a- there's like a fucking conspiracy against Pac-Man. I'm like convinced now. We went down again. I'm convinced there's a conspiracy against Pac-Man. There's also no sound. It literally is harder than eating loud ice cream. Honestly. Also, the sound isn't working. Why is it not working? Oh, there we go. Hmm. Now we got sound. And now we got video! Oh my god! It's finally happening! I'm streaming Pac-Man World. Man, this guy dumb as shit. That was all it took. They're messing with my boy fishing. Look at how happy he is. His life his life has been ruined and that's all the expression you could get out of him. Meet Pac-Man, live and in person. The original with cutscene was better. Yeah, this is- this definitely, like, gives a little bit of the, uh, budgeted remake vibe. Literally unplayable. I have to read the terms of service for Pac-Man? How long are these terms of service? What the fuck? Dude, it's a PS1 game. 
I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> Remember to put on performance mode or it'll be 30 FPS forever. What? Why do they have like 23 terms of services? It's Pac-Man World for the PS1. What the fuck? There's a privacy policy? It's Pac-Man! What on earth? Alright. Yeah, we'll do performance mode. Tommy Tallarico made the OST for this game? Did he? I actually did not know that. Oh my fucking god, fucking Tommy Tallarico. I'm gonna guess that they didn't get him for this remake, but they probably just made remixes of his songs. No, no, yo, you fools. I said gold ribbons and red balloons. The DJ and decor are awful, and I wanted strawberries on the cake. Are you trying to ruin my party? Mr. Talkman, bad news! What is it? Pac-Man's here, on Ghost Island. See, right there. That's the real Pac-Man. Uh, well, uh, of course it's the fake that you speak of. Ah, uh, just a hopeless fool. So you didn't capture Pac-Man. Ah, uh, well, you're right. <laughs> Pac-Mom. I for it's really funny that they don't have the copyright to Miss Pac-Man, so they had to make Pac-Mom. <laughs> Everybody's favorite Pac-Man character, Pac-Mom. It's something like that. Chimp stream when? Like a like a stream of chimps? Oh dude, you can go to your big size now. This definitely wasn't in the original. I do not remember big mode. Or maybe there was big mode and I forgot about it because I... I think the last time I tried to play Pac-Man World was when I got my current PS1. Which was... Probably... Like, probably a year ago. I didn't get that far on that replay. Original was just like normal Pac-Man. Got it. I've heard that this game has a lot of, uh, it's, it's quite a bit easier than the original. It's got some quality of life stuff. I heard that some of the bosses don't suck nearly as much. Cause like, if there is like one problem that the original definitely has is that some of those bosses just like suck. Also, yeah, there's like a flutter jump. I think I could do that. Although I don't- my depth perception sucks. I'm liking this too. But I hope you're all having a good night. Again, I, I I got a new microphone, and since Michael is in chat, like, shout out to Michael. He was the one who recommended the current mic. Hope if this does well, they remake more old Namco games. That would be cool. Disconnected! Reconnection successful. Hold up. We need a Pac-Man World 2 remake. We disconnect it. Like, this new OBS update is like the update of the future where we go down for one second now. Want a We Heart Katamari remake first? I would be down for more, like, 
I don't know if, like, re-rolled counts as a remake, but I'd be down for more stuff like that, because I really like that. And I'd love to play more Katamari. I guess now that I have a better computer, I could probably emulate some older ones. And thank you, J Bravo fan. Oh, oh, for the follow. Thank you, thank you. I don't know if I'm, like, honestly, like, super familiar with a lot of, like, Bandai Namco's output outside of, like, you know, this game and, like, Katamari. What, what, like, other stuff does, like, Bandai Namco usually do? I guess they did Jump Force. That's something. Everybody, everybody knows that video games begin and end with Jump Force. They do Tekken, right. I do own the original Tekken on PS1. I don't think I've ever actually played it, though. But I should, now that I'm... Now that I'm a bit more familiar with fighting games. Mr. Driller? I am I am vaguely aware of Mr. Driller. I've never played a Mr. Driller game, but He's Dig Dug's son. Is that the lore? I guess they I guess they did also do Dig Dug. Galaga, Galaxian, Dig Dug, Pole Position. A lot of the more classic arcade games. Makes sense. Are we just naming video- No, we're specifically talking about video games that Namco made. Yeah. I know this game had, like, references to older Namco games. Or at least the original did. You made Dig Dog? Is this true? They did Ridge Racer! I know about Ridge Racer. Okay, actually, like, Namco has worked on more things that I've heard of than I thought. For some reason, in my mind, I was just like, oh yeah, Namco, they made, like, Pac-Man and, uh, er. <laughs> you played the Namco Museum games on PS1, so you know of the lore? Mm-hmm. Namco published the Souls games? Actually, that sounds about right, yeah. Or at least they did early on. I don't know if they still do. They published Elden Ring? Okay, then they probably, like, publish a bunch of them. Soul Calibur! For some reason, I thought Soul Calibur was Sega. I guess because, like, in, for some reason, in my mind, the first Soul Calibur game is associated with the Dreamcast. Think Bandai Namco only published Dark Souls 1? Mm-hmm. Okay. They made the Splatterhouse games. Yeah, we mentioned Katamari earlier. Again, like, actually... Now that I have a beefier computer, if I could just, like, emulate a bunch of old Katamari games. Are there, like, any, like, Katamari games on Steam other than, like, Reroll? Soul Calibur is associated with Nintendo for you because you would always choose Link and Spam Arrows. <laughs> yeah, they did the Klonoa remake.
Maybe I will. Maybe I will look into the Klonoa remakes at some point. Again, I mentioned it earlier when like the Klonoa remakes just came out, and I was thinking about maybe getting like the physical edition from Play Asia because they didn't make one for North America for some fucking reason. Fucking Namco. Um. I didn't because that was the week I bought Sonic and the Secret Rings and Sonic and the Black Knight. <laughs> because there's something wrong with me. Need to import them, but you're feeling like more of a Wii type guy? Mm hmm. Well, the Wii. Buying them on Wii is probably expensive as hell. Oh, I can't jump on their heads. Original Wii Make is 60? Damn! It's like the price of a new game. Yeah, I can't stomp those specific ghosties. The Wii version is also the remaster on Switch. Mm-hmm. Well, the remaster on Switch is like 40 and you get another game with it. I need heals. I gotta get out of here. There we go. Oh, what the hell? It's fine. OBS, OBS giving me a notification saying you got disconnected, then I immediately reconnect. How does that look like on Twitch? Does it just like buffer for a second? Kanoa's design is better in the new remake than the Wii version. What is going on? Hold on. Reconnection successful, let's go. I don't know why that keeps happening. Again, like, this has to be the hardest stream I've ever done. But hello, everyone. Pac-Man is fighting back. He is, he's like rebelling against me. Yeah, this is the Switch version. I I pre-ordered this on Switch before I even got like the new computer. And I think like now I probably could have just gotten it on Steam, but it's fine. I like having physical copies. Every time I read your messages, you instantly get a Wolverine ad. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's, uh, according to Twitch, I think the stream went down at some point, which I didn't know.
Oh, I can do this, yeah. It's gone down twice. What the hell? Yeah, I, like, I, I, again, like, this has to be the hardest- It disconnected! When I'm streaming, it's perfect, but every few minutes, you get the not-like-this screen. Yeah, every so often, I've been- I get the loud-ass stream disconnected notification. Like right now! Why is it going down and then right back up? What is happening? Oh my god, hi. Dude, I don't know what's up with this tonight. If it's gonna, like, disconnect me, why does it go right back up? Oh, and we're dropping mad frames right now. Come on, man. Pac-Man is stronger than RE7. It literally, like, is. I apologize that, like, on the viewer end, this is probably, like, fucking hell to watch. At least it'll look good on YouTube. I, I, I take some solace in the fact that since I record all my streams, this will look good on YouTube. But I bet there's, like, people who are, like, not watching the stream, and they just, like, they keep getting, like, notifications on their phone for, for Pac-Man World, and they're like, what the fuck is going on? That Morgan has, like, s s restarted the stream, like, five times? So hi, Jen, welcome. Pirates are literally always like this. Yeah, Pack kind of just can't be beat. You'll sub if I make the sub sound Pack just can't be beat. You want me to you want me to get rid of our beloved Mickey It's Riku sub sound? That's crazy. I don't think I could, like, at this point, I don't think I could ever replace the Mickey It's Riku sub alert. I haven't even played Kingdom Hearts. It's just too good. No, come on.
Jesus Christ. Alright. Well, we're back. You gotta destroy all the statues of Talkman. I don't know. I think we I, I I think we could come up with a compromise. I'll make the follow sound. Pack just can't be beat. And then I need everyone to like and then everyone will spam follow and unfollow over and over again so it keeps playing for the entire stream. Can only do it once. That's so. That sucks. Well, that's a, that's a lot less fun. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, for the follow. Thank you. Everyone makes new accounts and tells all their friends to follow. It's the ultimate guerrilla marketing stunt. Think it's funny they brought back the mechanic where you can turn metal, go to underwater in Pac-Man World 2, but it's literally only used in the first world. Honestly, I would love to play the other Pac-Man World games at some point. It's such, like, a neat little series. Someone who's only played the first one saying this. I mean, I don't know, this first game is fun. Or, I guess this remake. I've played the first one. That's not the remake, and I mean, it's really good. Huge Pac-Man World fan excited to play it for the first time. That would be me if I was playing any of the other Pac-Man World games. That would be true. But for Pac-Man World 1, I've played this game. Don't worry. I could not tell you necessarily how far I got. I don't think it was a game I ever beat, to be fair. And I think part of that was that I, I kind of didn't like the bosses. Which I feel like is the most common complaint with the first game. Back in 2020, you had a Streamlabs follower progress bar at the top of your stream that just said Dobby, and you had friends make like four accounts to try and figure out what you meant. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, honestly. Pac-Man World 2 is such a struggle. Well, what's, like, the deal with Pac-Man World 2? I know, like, Pac-Man World 3 has pretty mixed reception, because they, like, did, like, combat and shit in that. You know, you have, uh, have Pac-Man punch people. It's a very unpolished game with random difficulty spikes. That's a little upsetting. I say upsetting, it's a little sad. Oh, I meant three. I meant three in terms of, like, weird. I, 
I have heard Pac-Man World 2 is the best one also. First three worlds of Pac-Man World 2 are goaded. It has voice acting and combat. I do vaguely remember seeing a clip of Pac-Man voice acted, and that's like fucked up. Same company as the Burger King games, let's go. Pac-Man is one of those characters where I don't, I don't think he should talk. Like, in my mind, Pac-Man is not a character who should speak. I just don't- I, I just don't think it'd be possible to give Pac-Man a voice where I'd be like, Oh no, yeah, that's like the definitive Pac-Man voice. I feel like I'd always listen to Pac-Man talk and, and be like, There ain't no goddamn way. Yeah, I mean- I mean, like, Ghostly Adventures is a good example of that. Although, to be fair, I think, like, Ghostly Adventures Pac-Man is supposed to be younger anyways. But still, when I hear that voice come out of Pac-Man's mouth, I'm like, no, that's not what Pac-Man sounds like. If Pac-Man had a voice, that would not be what it is. We got 10 lives? Kind of rolling in the lives right now. Still think 3 is a good game overall. Mm -hmm. sections. Whoa! Okay, this is a lot of bottomless pits. Whoa! Okay, it's fine. It saves our progress. So there's not really that much of a reason that it doesn't just, like... I guess if you fuck up the platforming sections really bad. We got Pac-Man nuke. So many Pac-Man collectibles. Can we get a Pac-Man marathon at some point? What what would be like the Pac-Man marathon? I guess is my question. Oh, that was dangerous apparently. And I just avoided the danger. just want me to play Ghostly Adventures on Wii U? Alright, how much does Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures cost on Wii U? If it's like five bucks, I'll, I'll get it. Did I know that Inti Creates co-developed the Ghostly Adventures game? That makes sense to me. I also just realized all I had to do was this. I am not bright. Ten dollars is too much.
Listen, I bought, like, Wii Music is my standard. I spent five bucks on Wii Music. I guess technically ten, actually, because I had to buy two copies, but... I bought, I, I, like, I bought Wii Music for five bucks. That's, like, my upper limit. Spent so much on Wii Music. <laughs> Yeah, having to buy two copies of Wii Music was really sad. I have to get the key. Where do I get the key for Puka? I think it might be too late. Ghostly Adventures isn't even that bad a game. Nintendo's online eShop only lists Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures 2 for 3DS. It's $20. That's too much. It's too much. I'm not, like, listen. You know, I don't know why I have these standards, because now that I'm thinking about it, I did spend 30 bucks on 1-2 Switch. Which is, like, definitely too much to spend on the joke of 1-2 Switch. I don't know, I'm, I'm allowed, like, one, like, big joke purchase per year. And that was the one. Next year, I'll be allowed to buy Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. Well, pa Cooking Mama Cookstar wasn't, like, a joke game. I've heard it's a not very good game, but it is a not very good game that I'm actually, like, interested in outside of, like, doing a bit. I feel like it has some kind- like, especially given my own history, it has some kind of historical value to me. And for the people who do not know this, um... As you may all remember, there were rumors that Cooking Mama Cookstar was like a Bitcoin miner, and like it was using your Nintendo Switch to mine crypto. I am partially responsible for spreading that rumor online. Like, I was not the one who started it, but I made a like viral post about it. To the point where if you go on the Know Your Meme page for Cooking Mama Cookstar, like, my old tweet is on there. Let's go. Talk man. This is honestly even more intense than Croc. The actual explanation that the game is actually just so poorly optimized that it overheats the switch is really funny. Yeah, no, it's like hilarious, to be fair. You once said on stream something about me being on Know Your Meme, and when you looked it up, the article I was in was subject to deletion? Which one was that? Because I was, like, I'm in a few Know Your Meme articles. There, there, there are actually, like, as far as I know, three separate Know Your Meme articles that I am in. It's, it's the fan-made Reggie Minch page that I don't know why, but someone made a Know Your Meme page for Reggie Minch. Um, that one I could imagine would probably be subject to deletion.
Um, I'm in the Ronaldino soccer know your meme page. Me and Serpy are both on that. And I'm on the Cooking Mama Cookstar one. No, wait, I'm also in the Gumball one. Actually, I'm on four Know Your Meme pages. I'm also on the one for for SJW Gumball. But as SJW Gumball, my contribution to that was just the Ronaldino soccer, like, fake out. It's still a pretty good edit. It, it is! I think, like, any edit I've ever made of, like, the, the SJW gumball bit where it, like, does a fake out into something else is, like, one of the funnier things. I mean, I made a version with the, the Half-Life 2 in the end AMV, but that one didn't blow up. That one, like, that was a hit with, like, my friends, but it didn't blow up. I did also make another, like, fake-out video edit recently. I'm kind of just obsessed with, like, making fake-outs and video edits for the most part. I've noticed that this, like, for the most part, if there's, like, a new meme that kind of, like, serves as, like, a fake-out, like, that's what I'll do. I guess it's not even really a meme fake-out, but... I did an edit of this one, like, VTuber video where she was, like, being slightly fr flirtatious over, like, the mic in this one like, girl in Valorant was like, oh my god, wait, are you, like, single? What the hell? And I just edited it. Like, I, I, the inspiration for me making that video edit was I thought it would be really funny if I did a fake-out video edit where it does, like, the barn door effect to open up the other video. I just really wanted to make a video edit that used the barn door transition. And that's- that's my story. Still haven't watched the original video and you never will. You saw that and instantly thought Morgan would like this video and didn't realize I posted it until you had pasted it into Discord. <laughs> also, this is true. Kids would be very scared of the ghosts. And Scooby eats a Scooby snack. This seems like fun also. I'm actually surprised so far. Maybe maybe it gets like a little frustrating towards the end, but I'm surprised like this th this game has gotten or like this remake has gotten like Pretty middling reviews. But, whatever. Metacritic never affected my enjoyment in a game. Otherwise, I wouldn't be, like, the world's number one Sonic Forces fan. I'm the only person younger than 40 who uses a barn door transition. I mean, because it's such, like, a corny effect. And it, like, looks bad, and that's why I thought it would be funny. I wouldn't say it got, like, really bad reviews, but, like, specifically the Switch version, like, I think, I think the game has, like, a 64 on Metacritic, which is, like, that's less than Sonic and the Secret Rings. I, I live by the Sonic and the Secret Rings standard of, uh, if your game did worse than Sonic and the Secret Rings, uh, that's a little odd. That game got praised at launch, though. I mean, like, it, it got, like, a... Like, Sonic and the Secret Rings lands at a 69 on Metacritic, and yeah. Sonic and the Secret Rings got, like, way better review scores than it probably deserved because it was, like, an early Wii game. 
And then Sonic and the Black Knight got blasted because it was a later Wii game. Like, 2007 Nintendo Wii is, like, fundamentally different from 2009 Nintendo Wii. The, the, the standards in only, like, three years of the Wii existing, like, it, it shifted so much. It's probably part of the reason why the Wii, like, faltered a bit as, like, the system went on. Because more and more, like, people were less willing to deal with, like, m like not good, like, use of the motion controls. They might have, honestly. Because I also don't remember the space world being the second world. But maybe we're both just wrong. And what then? But yeah, it's a, it's a little weird to me that this remake hasn't gotten better reviews, especially, like, playing a little bit of it. But again, it might get more frustrating later on. Like, I don't know. This is, like, World 2. I mean, they're already making us do, like, a little bit of precarious platforming. They didn't make the jungle boss easier, that might cause some problems. I think they did. If I'm remembering the, which one the jungle boss is, like, they definitely did from what I heard. Fine, we have 15 lives. I don't remember if the original showers you with this many lives, but so far I feel like we've been, like, extremely good on lives. How's everybody doing, by the way? I feel like I can finally, like, more freely talk now that, like, we're not experiencing technical issues. This is the song I played in the intro. Let's go. Hi, Devi, welcome. Why can't I go? Oh. Yeah, I like Pac Man. This game's awesome. I have the Pac Man amiibo at my desk because, like, this, this like, Pac Man design is, like, perfect. I actually don't think they'll ever come up with a Pac-Man design that I think is better than the Pac-Man world Pac-Man design. It's like a like look at him. He's like perfected. Could he could he be like a little more expressive in this? Like yeah, probably, but Talked about Rune Factory too long and you're feeling the effects of not being able to romance Ray. Mm hmm I've I, I've heard good things about Rune Factory. I should play a game like that on stream. But we'll see. Maybe not Rune Factory, but like what's what's the game with the awesome doctor? Jen would know what I'm talking about. Also, yeah, Pack is back.
trio of town. No, not trio of towns. If it was, if it was like Story of Seasons or Harvest Moon or whatever, like I would know that game. It's an, it's a game that isn't out yet. Come on, you think I don't know Ford? I'm very, I'm very well acquainted with Ford. Doing the rolls is a little scary. Yeah, it's an indie game. It has like a retro anime style. I forget what the name of it off the top of my head is though. It's like Fields of Something. Yeah, no, I don't, like, I... Listen, I'm not, I'm not into a Ford like that. I think if, if he's hilarious as a character conceptually. Fields of Mystria, that's what it is. Or, Dr. Valen, yes. That's the one. Yeah, I want to play that game. When that game comes out, that's a day one stream for me. I don't know when it'll come out, though. It seems like it's still, like, a big work in progress. But hopefully, hopefully someday soon, we will get to play that. <sighs> Did you see Pac-Man slip by? Ow. And then I died. Fuck. I, I pressed A to jump. I was thinking Super Mario. Hi, hi Professor Pack. There should be a key nearby. Yeah, man. I'm totally gonna save you. And not just, like, move on. See ya. No, I'm just getting that key, Professor. I'm sure I'm gonna miss out on, like, a good ending or whatever, but that's fine. It looks like in July they took the early out of the early development in their bio. Let's fucking go? Hold up. You had a dream once where Professor Pack died? That's really funny. Rule streamer doesn't want to see Pac-Man have a happy ending. Nope, that's why I made him do that. <laughs> Play any- oh, come on. Come on. Oh wait, that was right there the whole time? Well, I guess we are saving Professor Pac. Well, since I- since I've been off stream for the past three days, I've been watching more stuff with Jen. We finished, uh, Adventure Time Distant Lands, and, like, I have, like, I have, like, intensely mixed feelings about it as, like, a series. I think that Obsidian, the episode where, uh, Gumball and Marceline are homosexuals. That's the that's the best part. That, like that is straight up like probably one of the best episodes of like any Adventure Time related thing. And then everything else, I'm not so sure about. No, Wizard City just sucks. Wizard City is a bad episode. I actually just straight up think that Wizard City is like one of the worst Adventure Time related things. And part of it is that it's, like, too fucking long. It's, like, it's 45 minutes long, and it it doesn't deserve to be that long, because it's just, like, bad. I, 
I actually like saw it and like my my like impression about it is that like the people who wrote it really did not like Peppermint Butler. Because they portray, like, Peppermint Butler as, like, this shithead that, like, the new Peppermint has to, like, leave in the past. And, like, and then it's just like, but, the, like, d d does anybody feel that way? Was that, that doesn't seem like that's popular, like, in the fandom was like, oh, yeah, you know what character sucks in Adventure Time? Peppermint Butler. It really is just like a bad, like a bad, like Harry Potter thing. I just, like, I just didn't get it. It was too long, like, no, like, the, the only character that was particularly likable was, like, Abraka Daniel's niece. And even then, like, I kept, like, the whole time I was just like, girl, you need to, like, get a better friend. Because this whole time, she was, like, sucking up to Peppermint Butler, who was just kind of treating her like shit. And it's just like, you got, you gotta move on. Obsidian is, like, again, like, that, s straight up probably one of the best Adventure Time-related things I have watched. I think that... Bemo and Together Again are all right, but some of the characterization is weird. Like, I guess, like, for the, the Bemo episode, like, it's not that out of character. Although, I thought a couple of times, like, man, Bemo is going a little too hard on this. And then Together Again... I don't know, something about the characterization of Finn in Together Again feels off. And I guess part of it is that they set it up as, like, Finn and Jake are dead. They're, like, old men who died. And, like, in my mind, I'm like, okay. So, like, Finn's probably gone through a lot of, like, character development. He's been, like, on a lot more adventures, but... He didn't come off to me as if he was any more mature than he was at, like, the start of Adventure Time. Obsidian is good also because they characterize Peppermint Butler better than the entire episode of Wizard City. True. Again, like... Weird characterization is a big part of what I don't like about Distant Lands, so I'm impressed that I don't have any of those problems with Obsidian. I think that Obsidian, like, gets the characterization of Gumball and Marceline, like, down perfectly. Yeah, no, that's like... That's like one of the best jokes in the show, honestly. Did I say but what am I saying? Listen, I'm like speaking so fast. I had a I had a I had a rough day at work. Bro did Gumball just become a okay? Whatever. Yeah, bubblegum's third eye fully open. Gumball's the guy PB voiced by Neil Patrick Harris. Well, see, that makes it even more confusing. Ow. Okay, he has electricity on his head. You do not want to mess with him. Alright, listen, I'm so I'm sorry that I keep calling Princess Bubblegum Gumball. I just got, like, it's, it... There's a lot of characters in Adventure Time, okay? There's, uh, there's like, hundreds of them. Yeah, we just ended up, like... 
I, I mentioned this in the last stream when we talked about Adventure Time. Like, I, like, we just started skipping the Fiona and Cake episodes because the first one, it's like... Okay, here's the joke is that Ice King is writing bad fan fiction, and then it's like, okay. And then it's like the second episode is like, okay, like Ice King is writing bad fan fiction again, and it's like, we did this joke? That, like, that's a joke that they already did? Yeah, no, the, the, the premise of the episodes is that they're bad fan fiction that the Ice King wrote. And, like, again, if they did it, like, one time, like, fine. It's whatever. That, that, that That's, like, fine. It's like, a, it's, like, a decent enough joke to pull off once. You can't pull it off more than once and have, like, the exact same punchline, which is, haha, the Ice King is writing bad fan fiction. It's just, like, I don't care... We did this already. Someone on the crew was just indulging themselves. Most certainly. I don't know, they're just not very- Like, the first two, like, left a sour enough taste in my mouth that I was just like, okay. If this is gonna be, like, the joke of all of them, then I don't care about watching the rest of them. Like, I'm not even someone who cares particularly about, like, oh, every, like, I, I have to skip, like, every episode of Adventure Time that isn't, like, adding to the overall narrative or whatever. It's just, like, no, I just did not, I did, like, the episodes are meaningless and also they're not funny. <laughs> like, you gotta pick one or the other. They have to be meaningful in some way or they have to be funny. <laughs> The thing about Fiona and Cake miniseries, it turns out they're supposed to be in the real world now, so does that cancel out the terrible fanfic tropes it follows? I mean, if they're- like, here's the thing. If they're just gonna be Finn and Jake too, why would they not just do a continuation of Adventure Time instead of making it Fiona and Cake? Like, what does it add by having these, like, alternate versions of the characters? Older Simon is there? So? Because the multiverse! Oh, I'm just straight up playing Galaga. Right, this boss. We straight up Galaga. Also, yeah, I, it, it, this is the third world, but I guess we skipped the second world? Fiona and Cake, with the help of the former Ice King Simon, embark on a multiverse hopping adventure of, in Journey of Self Discovery, all the while a powerful new antagonist determined to track them down and erase them from existence lurks in the shadows. Just make a. Just make a continuation! Just make it with Finn and Jake! Make a go in the multiverse! Why does it need to be Fiona and Cake specifically? Like, the Together Again made me want to watch more episodes of the show with Finn and Jake. I was like, hell yeah, they could they could do, like, more with these characters. Especially, like, after see well, Obsidian 2 also made me go, like, man, I want more of Finn and Jake. 
because like at the end they show like older Finn and I'm like whoa that would be really cool to see in like an episode and then they didn't really do anything with that the next episode they're fucking dead no I don't want more of Fiona and Cake I want more of Finn and Jay Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I talk, man. Don't doubt that the- that they'll run into Finn and Jake eventually, but yeah, it does kind of stink. Mm-hmm. I mean, also, like, what's even the status of this show? Of the Fiona and Cake show? Because, like, that shit was gonna be on HBO Max. And I don't know if you guys knew this. Uh, Cartoon Network does not have a great relationship with HBO Max right now. They canceled the Scoob sequel. This is getting a little crazy. They canceled the Scoob directed DVD movie sequel still happening. Let's go! It's still happening, Scoob fans. It's not over till it's over. Isn't, like, I'm still thinking about, like, isn't Scoob supposed to be the start of, like, a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe? Why are they trying to do a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe? Maybe because Muttley gets sent to hell. It gets sent to fucking hell? Dude, that's the dog from Wacky Races. It's called Wacky Races. Why does Muttley get sent to hell? That's how Jellystone happened? The Amazing World of Gumball movie is still going to be on HBO Max, but the series it's supposed to tie into isn't. I didn't even know they were making a Gumball movie. Like, I just, like, I have so little interest in the Amazing World of Gumball. That, like... The Amazing World of Gumball is a show that makes me, like, so fucking sad. Because, like, that is a show that starts off, like, re pretty good. Maybe maybe it's not, like, the best cartoon in the world, but it's a lot of fun. It, it, it goes through, like, a, like, all the characters are, like, these very different, very creative art styles. It, ha it has some, like, heart in like the first few seasons and then it just gets like so caught up in its own like meta humor humor and yeah like it does b basically become like south park for babies and it's like what the hell happened here the show was fine
yeah, like, w one of the show episodes in the later seasons is them making fun of some kid's DeviantArt OC. Like, who cares? Why is this an episode? Oh, Gumball did an epic clapback at this autistic child. Isn't that epic? Like... It's, it's a show that started off, like, fine. And then it got so caught up in being, like, meta and self-referential and, like, talking about, like, fandom and stuff. And it's just, like... I'm gonna keep it 100 with you guys. Like... Any show that has ever tried to, like, reference its own fandom or cater to its own fandom instantly becomes worse as a result. Okay? Any show that's ever tried to, like, make reference to its own, like, fandom and its own existence and becomes, like, this meta thing... It's... like, who cares? Like, it, sto it stops being a show about something, and it starts being a show about the fact that it's a show. to the left? Yes. Jungle. Okay, Jungle was supposed to be second world, but I went to Space World first because I saw it said... I thought... saw it... I, I thought I would just have to go to the right. Yeah, that's the thing. Like... That is a big problem with Sonic. Like, yeah, the Sonic Boom games are, like, so baffling for that. And I would say, like, honestly... There, there was definitely times where, like, the meta humor in Sonic Boom is like, Okay, we got, we got it, guys. Yeah, it was- it was very hit or miss. But I hope- but did you guys see the clip on Twitter where, like, Knuckles is, like, a progressive feminist? Did you guys see this clip? Yeah, but did you- but, like, did you see the episode where- where Knuckles is a feminist? In Focus Tats, we heard all the times, people were sick of speed, Sonic was too fast, they wanted to slow down, speed was shelved because we were under the impression people didn't want it, speed is always a th Sonic thing, we didn't focus on that- what? The funniest joke in Sonic Boom was Knuckles doing the pause jump exploit. I mean, that is pretty classic, to be fair. We should- I should stream Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, honestly. Oh, I thought we were talking about the game. I didn't know that was like a joke from the sh- or like an edit that someone made of the show. I was just like, oh yeah, the thing that happens in the game? Yeah, that's pretty funny.
It's weird. I probably should dislike Knuckles Sonic Boom more, more than I do because, like, it's definitely, like, a weird, like, flanderization of Knuckles' character. But also, he is kind of funny. He's, like, a little funny, and I'm willing to be more accepting of it because, like, it's supposed to be, like, a different canon. Yeah, he's, like, basically a different guy. And I think that's fine. I think- I, I think that Knuckles getting an entire platoon killed in Sonic Forces is probably a worse character moment than anything that happens to him in the Sonic Boom canon. You know, Knuckle, Knuckles acts like stupid in the Sonic Boom canon, but he also doesn't get an entire platoon killed. <laughs> so he's got that going for him. Yeah, like, Amy, Amy can be a fine character. And honestly, I would say, like, her Sonic Boom incarnation, because she's not as, like, obsessive about Sonic, is probably one of the better interpretations of the character. But it's like, they do it too much. It's like, they, they give her no other personality, and it's just like, we ha- we, we established, like, her character in Sonic Adventure, and then it never carried over. And, like, granted, a lot of, like, Sonic Adventure characterizations did not carry over, but... Like, I don't know, it's particularly frustrating in Amy's case because she feels, like, so much more flanderized. It feels like in so many interpretations of Amy Rose, it's like, oh my god, Amy is obsessed with Sonic and she'd do anything to get him. And it's like, we get it, we've heard this joke. A million times. Like she, like, she is genuinely, like, an interesting character in Adventure 1 and Adventure 2. Not that she's not, like, in- she's, like, not into Sonic. But, like, she gets, like, more to do in these stories aside from that. Then you go to Sonic Heroes and, like, you do the boss fight where you have to fight Team Sonic. And she says, Sonic, this time there's no way at getting to marry me. Amy in the Sonic Mania shorts is adorable. This is true. I love that old design. Her old design is just kind of strictly better than her new design also. Amy should just be a silly kid. Literally. Literally, though. Like, I don't know. Like, she's probably, like, honestly, I would say, like, one of the worst characterized Sonic characters. I feel like they rarely ever get her right. Like, Shadow has got it pretty bad. They kind of, like... They characterize Shadow weirdly a lot of the time. But, like, I don't think Amy has ever had, like, a particularly great character moment after Adventure 2. Here's the thing. Shadow gets it pretty bad in, like, modern interpretations. Although, honestly, I think he's probably, like, fine in Sonic... No, he's not that good in Sonic Forces. He's the whole reason why Infinite is like that. But, like... Shadow is, like, actually probably done the most justice in Sonic 06. Outside of his first appearance in Adventure 2, of course. But, like, weirdly enough, I have the least amount of problems with his interpretation in Sonic 06. 
which seems like such an insane thing to say considering how everything else is in that game. It is weird that they have him working for Gun. I'll never get that, but like... His, his story in 06 is like... The most interesting and also the most complete. And also, like, probably, like, sh Shadow's 06 story is, like, responsible for one of the single funniest moments in the entire series. Which is Shadow using Chaos Control to slow down time just so he can kick Silver in the head. Hard mode playthrough in Shadow the Hedgehog is explicitly him going through gun training, huh? Also, yeah, there's mazes in this game. I actually thought they just took them out. I do think that him working for gun is odd, considering how much shit they gave him and how much worse his life is because of them. But, like, whatever. It's a living. This is true. Shadow's just working his 9 to 5 so he can get paid. That way he can afford, he can afford uh, new, new punk rock albums. He decided to work for Gun because he likes their name. True. I actually, I I need to stream hard mode of Shadow the Hedgehog at some point. I'd probably use a cheat to give me infinite lives because it is, like, pretty hard, but it's, like, actually also the best way to experience Shadow the Hedgehog. There's a really cute quote near the end of hard mode where the gun commander is like, actually, I just became a grandfather last week and I'd love to have you over after you're done with this. That is pretty nice, to be fair. Also, yeah, Shadow the Hedgehog has a hard mode. It is my prefer- like, whenever I go back to play Shadow the Hedgehog these days, I just play on hard mode now. Oh yeah, they did do a real-time fan dub for Shadow. I actually still haven't watched it. And like, I've enjoyed the other real-time fan dubs that have been made. But honestly, like, my, my most petty thing, and, like, I like th I mean absolutely no offense to Penny Parker for saying this, I cannot stand her cover of I Am All of Me. I, I think she has a great voice, and I really liked the EP she put out last year. She, I, 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 I have a fundamental disagreement with how she covers I Am All of Me. I, I can't, I can't, like, I, I can't, like, wrap my brain around it. It's just, like, this just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't do it for me. It, it's fine if other people like it. I'm not so much of a hater. But I am, like, that that's, like, that's, like, my pet, petty business is that I don't particularly care about her cover of I Am All of Me. Penny Parker, if you ever somehow watch this... Uh, stream, I'm sorry, you're- you're a great creator. Uh, I think you're funny. I, I'm sure you're, like, a nice person. I just- I- I just- I- I need- like, I- like, I- I-, I listen, I'm- I'm a metalhead. I'm a metalhead, it- it was never gonna work out. Yeah, the- I miss my wife Tails line is really good. I think that, that, like, 
I don't know if this is like a problem in Shadow, but I know that a problem in a lot of the earlier like Sonic fan dubs is that they like rely a bit too much on like the sexual humor, which is like, you know, weird with Sonic characters. But like I like I'm they they've explicitly stated like yeah we want to like cut down on that we don't want that so much after some nasty people got kicked they're a lot better yeah I did hear that there was some uh, drama in that group where a couple of people got uh, shafted. I don't know exactly what happened, and maybe it's one of those things that might be too unsavory to talk about on stream if you're talking about how nasty it is. But I, I, I do remember seeing that happen and seeing, like, people get kicked out of real-time fan dubs, and I was like, oh shit, something happened there. And you know what? Maybe it's not even my business, honestly. I I'm the kind of person who does kind of believe that a lot of internet drama is strictly not my business. Like, have I commented on some of it before? Probably. But I think for the most part, like, so much internet drama can be, like, boiled down to, like, this is, like, a personal scuffle that most of us shouldn't should have never given a shit about. Like, I think I talked about it recently. There was, like, a, like, popular streamers, Small Ant and Point Crow had, like, a falling out. And it, like, my YouTube recommendations were just flooded with videos about it. And I was just like, why are you all this invested in, like, these two friends, like, falling out? Like, who cares this much? It's just, like, two guys on the internet who happen to not be friends anymore. They had like they had like a disagreement and then they stopped being friends. It happens. Like and that's what so much like internet drama can be boiled down to is that this is like a personal thing that never should have like come out. Like it should have never been like publicized. But people were going to ask because like, you know, oh Need to bounce first? This is true. Yeah. I'm not gonna say that's particularly the case for the real-time fandub stuff, because I did hear that it was pretty shitty. But I feel like, as a general rule of thumb for a lot of internet drama, like, sometimes it really is just as simple as, like, sometimes two people just don't get along. And honestly, that's the kind of internet drama I would want to be a part of, is where it's just like... Sometimes people just don't get along. Like, I don't want to have a falling out with someone and have it be like, Oh yeah, by the way, they actually, like, killed someone and that's why we're not friends anymore. No, I would just want it to be like, yeah, they made, like, a dumb joke. And I said, that's stupid. And now we're not friends anymore. <laughs> not that I would want to get into drama in the first place. But I would just- I would just love it to be, like, something that isn't, like, a big deal at all. If it's gonna happen, it might as well, like, be- like, mean nothing. What if I got into drama with the Looney Tunes fandom for saying Porky Pig is better than Daffy Duck? Well, that wouldn't happen to me because Daffy Duck is definitely better than Porky Pig. Like, I'm sorry to the Porky Pig fans, but Daffy Duck is, like, superior. Like, it's not even a fucking contest. I do remember when Jerma and Stir had the falling out, and, like... Actually, that's probably part of the reason why I don't give a shit anymore. It's specifically because when I was a kid, or like, I guess I wasn't a kid, but when I was a teenager, I was like so invested in like the falling out between like Jerma and Stir. Because they were both creators that I watched a lot when I was younger. And they like very much inspired my like style of video making at the time. 
And, like, you know, I was like, oh, it seems like Stir was, like, a real dickhead to Germa. And, like, he shouldn't have said those things. And, like, all this shit. And then, like, it just turned out that, like, Stir said something kind of inflammatory on an Overwatch stream. And neither of them actually gave a shit. And that was the end of the drama, was that just Stir appeared on a Germa stream. And then everybody was like, oh, wait, yeah... It actually, like, literally did not matter. It, 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 like, they didn't stop being friends, they just stopped working with each other because their style of streaming was very different. Stir was, like, on that Overwatch train at the time, and Jerma wasn't that invested in the game after a bit. So, like, there was no real reason for them to work with each other for a bit. And that's how I learned, like, yeah, most internet drama is, like, who gives a shit? It really, like, sometimes it is as simple as, like, it, like it, sometimes it just straight up doesn't even exist. Like, the German stir thing, like, there was no actual beef. And then, like, then you have shit like conspiracy grumps. Like, I, I can't think of anything worse than being a member of either the subreddit Conspiracy Grumps or the subreddit Cinemassacre Truth. Do people, like, not know about, like, Conspiracy Grumps? You know, for some reason in my mind, Conspiracy Grumps was a well-known thing. Okay, Conspiracy Grumps is, like... People making- it's essentially, like, people coming up with conspiracy theories about, like, JonTron and Aaron Hansen having, like, a big falling out, and that's the reason they stopped doing Game Grumps with each other. And people have been doing this for, like, nine years now, and there's still people who are riding the conspiracy Grumps train being like, Oh my god, this is why they won't work together anymore. And just all this shit. Nowadays, if, like, if, like, the Aaron Hansen JonTron Fallout happened in, like, 2017 when JonTron went on that live stream and said, uh, interesting things about minorities, um, like, nobody would have even cared. Like, I feel like at that point, the fan bases would have been, like, so fundamentally split by that occurrence. That everyone would be like, yeah, no shit, they're not working together anymore. But because it happened in, like, 2013, everybody's like, Oh my god, but I thought they were, like, they must have had, like, a crazy falling out and they're not, like, friends anymore. And, like, all this shit. And they're still, like, people are still doing it. Like, you can still, like, like I guarantee... There's probably, like, semi-recent posts on r slash conspiracy grumps. And it's, like, the same thing with Cinemassacre Truth is, like, people will come up with these conspiracy theories about, like, Oh my god, this is why James Rolfe and Mike Matei don't work with each other much anymore. And it's like, oh, and it's like, but did you hear these things that happened to Bootsy and Kyle Justin? And it's just like... And it just feels like a lot of this stuff is just not people's business. But they want to make it their business because it's like, it's like, oh, but these people used to be friends. Mike, as far as I know about Mike Matei leaving Cinemassacre is that he just wanted to focus on his streaming career. Instead of, like, doing, like, angry video game nerd and such. He is credited on a recent episode of AVGN, and to be fair, that episode is pretty good. But yeah, like, Mike Matei just, like, moved on to, like, doing streaming instead. Like, this shit happens. Listen, you gotta understand that, my, like, James Rolfe has been doing AVGN for, like, 20 years, and also, like, so was Mike Matei, basically. 
He was also doing it like nearly that entire time. Also, that's a pretty good Arlo conspiracy, but I don't buy it personally. But, like, people- people get too invested in the personal lives of, like, people they watch on the internet. It really is just, like, a- it, it, it's, like, the same fascination people had with, like, celebrity drama. And I guess, like, obviously, like, people still have a fascination with celebrity drama. But now, sometimes, that celebrity drama is about some guy who has a bunch of subscribers on YouTube. And like with celebrity drama, again, sometimes it's just straight up not your business. You know? Okay, but we have to save Pack Dog. Actually, like, I'll feel like shit if I don't save Pack Dog. I know I didn't save Puka, but that's because Puka is a criminal. Puka didn't deserve to be saved. There are many Pukas, but only one pack buddy. Literally. Literally. That's fine that Puka didn't get saved. He's not even part of Pac-Man's family. Be waiting outside for you. Doggy. Goodbye, doggy. Bye, puppy. I love dogs. Pukas are an invasive species according to the Mappy cartoon. Awesome. <laughs> I have to go now. My planet needs me. Pack Buddy died on the way to his home planet. Speaking of dogs, something me and Jen started watching together was, uh... Courage the Cowardly Dog. And, like, we, we got through, like, the first, like, seven blocks of episodes. And it was, like, th so funny re-watching it because so many of the Courage villains are just, like, guys. Like, a lot of- like, a lot of the early Courage the Cowardly Dog villains are just like, what if there was a weird guy? Like, Freaky Fred is, like, one of the most iconic villains in that show, and he's just a guy who likes making people bald. That's what Freaky Fred is. And he's like, ta he's like talking all this shit like, I love to be naughty. And he just, like his whole bit is that he makes people bald. Hi, Pack Buddy. It is very funny. Courage the Cowardly Dog is a very funny show. That's what my hand looks like after gaming too much. Ow. I'm not going fast enough. Yeah, this is a little fucked up and scary. Ow. I'm going too slow. Got tired of seeing that episode because they used to rerun it all the time, but it's a good one. It really is.
It is so hard to tell when he's, like, close to me. I fell in the lava. <laughs> Alright, this is where I lose all my lives. All my precious lives I stocked up on. This is what we were saving them for. What is your confession, Jen? Are we already a boss? Let's go. When you were watching the Freaky Fred episode, you were wondering to yourself if anybody is attracted to this guy. I mean, that's not what I thought about when I saw Freaky Fred. Also, yeah, this boss is, uh, infamous in the PS1 game. Sadlock is 5-1?! Hold on, can you please send a source right now? Please, please, I am on my arms and knees. I'm begging you to, like, send me the source right now. Oh, I see. I gotta completely break the chains. Whoop. Yeah, this is, like, probably the point where I stop playing because this boss is, like, complete and utter fucking ass in the PS1 game. Uh, so far it seems fine, though. Actually didn't make it that far in the game, huh? Ain't no goddamn way Zavok is that short. Five one. I'm taller than Zavok. And like I'm taller than Zavok in a way where it would be noticeable. Like, f I got four inches on Zavok. I mean, yeah, like, Sonic is obviously, like, short. But Zavok looks, like, so damn big. Like, he's supposed to be, like, a big brute of a guy. Ow, I died. I think- I- 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 I think we have a fundamental, like, misunderstanding here. Here's the reason why Zavok being so short is fucked up. Because, like, Zavok is essentially, like, Sonic Bowser. And Bowser is, like- unmistakably, like, a big guy. Like, Bowser, absolutely, if they gave him a cannon height, it would be, like, way taller than 5'1". I, I, I would never stream Namco High because I have standards. Well, no, Mario's not, like, a normal guy. He's he's a short Italian man who jumps really high. He looks super fucking short next to Peach. Ow. This boss still kind of is hard as fuck. I hope I get a checkpoint. Fuck. Like, like, that's the thing. You have to understand that because, like, Peach and Bowser are as big as they are. 
Like, it doesn't make sense to me that a character like Zavok is 5'1". It doesn't even look like that, like, it does not look like a foot and a half is the size difference between Zavok and Sonic. Joke take Zavok wants what Rila has in Journey of Dreams. I think like Zavok wants to be like a character that like means anything aside from being the whore guy. And he just doesn't have what it takes. I just damage boosted right through that. Yep. Please give me a checkpoint. Nope. Yep. No. I... No. Oh, there's no checkpoints in this fight, huh? I, I was pressing A button. I'm embarrassed. This fight is stressing me out enough that I'm forgetting the controls. Man, you don't get any heals in between any of these, huh? Well, that mummy is dead. <gasps> I could do that the whole time! Wait, never mind. This boss is easy now. <laughs> Wait, this is easy clap now. I could have just done that the whole time. No! Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. I'm mad. All I had to do was hit into that guy. Everyone knows Zaz is actually the best because he's in Sonic Dash on iOS. What the fuck is Sonic Dash? I don't know, like, any of the Sonic mobile games. Like, they all seem like the same game to me. In my mind, like, they all exist as, like, the same video game. Whoa! Why did I zip right through him? It's just a Sonic Endless Runner and it exists. Mm hmm. Okay, 
he fell off. It's basically the same as Sonic Forces Speed Battle, but in that game you race against other guys. And what is Sonic Forces Speed Battle? These are all like games that don't exist to me. Or just Sonic Forces. <sighs> oh my god. Oh my god. No! 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 The wizard, you're taking back my power! No! I had like a tear drop from my eye doing that voice. I pressed the A button to jump again. This boss is flustering me. I still heard that this is way better than it is in the PS1 game, and I believe it. I've actually gotten close to beating it. Oh, fuck. No! Where are my power-ups? Where is heals? Oh my god, nothing is healing me anymore. Oh my god, what the hell? I thought they were on, like, a consistent pattern. Of what they do to... Oh, what they drop? What is happening? No, I. Why are they not dropping heels? I thought they did every second guy, and then it goes in a pattern of three. It goes. Yeah, I want you to imagine this, but, like, five times harder. Maybe not five times, but it's, like, way harder in the PS1 version. The PS1 version of this fight is fucked. There we go, that's what we've been waiting for.
Let's go. Okay. We're on the final phase. We can do it this time. Harder than darned souls. Kind of true. No, 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 that was the fucking run. I have to piss. I have to pee so bad. Okay, hello. I went to the bathroom and I, uh, changed into PJs. Now I feel refreshed. Now, now I really feel back in it. Like, this is a new beginning for, uh, Pac-Man. This is a new frontier in the Pac world. Um... It is also scary, though. This is a scary game. We were close. We were close. We probably... Like, if we get, like, one more good attempt in there, I think that's it. I forgot that last night I discovered this, like, new meme. Hold on, I could, we could play the game and talk about it. There's, like, a new meme online that's, like, if Blank was released in 2007... And it's like, it's like different endings to movies and like trailers and stuff that end with like, it, it has like, it has Linkin Park's What I've Done playing in it. And it's just like, like, it made me smile. It made me smile to see that like, Linkin Park has some, has some meme relevancy. Because honestly, like, it, it feels a lot more like, genuine this time. 
I feel like, like, back in, like, 2014, there were, like, a lot of Linkin Park memes and jokes, and it was like, oh, haha, -ha, they're, like, this stupid, edgy band. But I feel like, especially after the passing of the late and great Chester, um, uh, there's a lot more, like, oh, shit. What happened to the capture card? What? What happened to the capture card? It just stopped. The fuck? Huh? Up. Oh. There we go. It feels like like I I feel like modern Lincoln Park memes are like a lot like like they have a sort of reverence for the band. Like Half Life in the end. It's like, it's partially reverence for the band and also just like, holy shit, we just like found this machinima that has insane like animation for 2009 and is like, it has Linkin Park playing over it. Like, I just ma it just makes me happy, you know? I'm glad this is how things turned out. No, yeah, the Half-Life 2 in the end AMV is, like, old as dirt. That is, like, from, like, the olden days. <sighs> Fuck. Like, I'm pretty sure the Half-Life 2 AMV is just, like, animated using Source as the engine. Like, not even Source Filmmaker. It is old enough where they just, like, straight up had to do all that by, like, editing Source. They had to make their own animations in the engine. And not, like, in a dedicated filmmaker. From what I've heard, Source Filmmaker is kind of hellish to use. And, like, the people who understand it are, like, people who work at Valve. I don't know, it's like the same people who figured out how to do, like, Gary's mod animations when they're young. It takes a lot more patience than I'll ever have. If Pac-Man can't do this, no one can. This is true. I'm loving this glitch, where the- where the mummies can't hurt you. Ow. MMD is more straightforward than SFM, but also the physics make you sad. Oh, fuck. Thank God for that. Oof. No! What? What? I'm actually so mad. Why did I go right through him? Did I actually miss that much? I am so... Come on, man. Why? 
Also, yeah, Bug Snacks is on Switch. It's been on Switch for a while. Came out in like April. I just got the physical edition in from Fan Gamer. That's why I was talking about the other day, like I was probably gonna stream it at some point. Again, this is the easier version of this fight. Like, the version in the PS1 game is significantly harder. I think I've lost, like, 10 lives to this guy. The Galaga fight was, like, one shot. Although, I don't actually remember if the Galaga fight is that hard in the original. I think it's just kind of long. the fuck? This shit sucks. I fucking hate this fight. Oh my god. I, I, I cannot believe that like a year and a half ago, I was like, oh yeah, I'd love to stream the PS1 version of this game. I think this boss would have pissed me off too hard. It's already like pissing me off here. There ain't no way in hell I would have been able to get through the PS1 game. <laughs> I want this to be over so bad. I was, like, I was having so much fun with, like, everything else in the game. I was having a great time. I've been on this boss for, like, a half hour now. Or at least it feels like it. I gotta stay focused. I just have to stay focused.
fucked myself over by panicking with the st fucking butt bounce. Oh my god. That was my fault. It feels worse that it's my fault. I missed it better when I could blame the game. Now that I know it's my fault. Uh. That's fine, just stay fucking focused. I don't want to play this boss fight anymore. I don't want to fight Anubis anymore. I'm like a sopping wet pathetic beast right now. I'm looking at you with the wettest eyes you ever seen. With a single big cartoon teardrop. I'm waiting for him to shoot that fucking laser again. No! What? Why did I go for it again? <laughs> Hold on. I need to confirm that I'm not insane.
All right, we rolled back the footage. I went right through him. That's so upsetting. That's that's horrific. I tried to press A to jump. That was a I pressed A to jump moment. It doesn't work like that. Oh my god, you're right. Wait, hold on. This is a game changer. Out of here. <laughs> how many how many lives did that take? Oh my god, get absolutely fucking blasted, you fool. Whew. That was a hard one. But we did it. Oh my god. Well, that's the hardest boss in the game. That is generally considered to be the hardest boss in the game. So honestly, it should get easier from here. boss is sort of hard, but not on that level. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're like halfway through the game. I think we could beat this tonight. Okay, we were doing good pace before that boss. I think we could beat this game tonight. This world four? 
This is five. Also, I didn't even like process your like the full joke that you said, Devi. I just a fuck. It was a fucked up fight, to be sure. Think you remember the hub being a straight line in the original? Yeah, I also remember that. Welcome to the fun house. Yeah, I think World 3 might actually be as far as I got because I don't even remember this level. I remember the space level, I remember the temple level, which I guess must mean I beat Anubis. Because I don't know if you could skip to World 3 in it, but I don't remember this. I don't know how the fuck I would have beat Anubis. That might just be one of those things where when I was younger, I was better at this game. Well, no, I guess not. I, I just had more free time, so I could dedicate more time to uh, throwing myself at the damn wall. bumper car trying to kill me it's kind of one thing that's like a nice quality of life thing in this remake is that they give you the checkpoints the original also has checkpoints but like you never know where they are so if you die you're just sent to what essentially seems like a random part of the level look the ghosts have clown noses But yeah, before we fought Anubis, we were making good pace, so honestly, I do think we beat this tonight. Oh, that raises the question of what I'm gonna stream tomorrow. Hmm. I don't want to start Bug Snacks, because I'm worried we wouldn't be able to finish it before uh, Splatoon 3 comes out on Friday. Especially because that like it has the Big Snacks DLC now, doesn't it? Like, you have to- I- I would probably be doing the DLC. I guess I didn't do the DLC of Resident Evil 7, but... Uh, Bug Snacks is a way scarier game than, uh, Resident Evil 7, because, uh, the- They're, like, if bugs were also snacks. And that's fucked up. I think maybe tomorrow? Actually, Red- <laughs> It's funny that you mentioned Sonic Reed. I think we might try finishing Sonic and the Secret Rings tomorrow. I think that might be the move. Because Sonic and the Secret Rings is kind of currently, like, unfinished business. I was doing it before I took my hiatus. And I will say also, like, that last stream ended on kind of a sour note. I was not in a good mood that day. And I don't think when I was in a bad mood, playing Sonic in the Secret Rings was the best move to make. The thing that was putting me in a bad mood back then has also been, like, long solved. So, like, that's not even, like, an issue anymore. Like, I would be fine. I would just be getting pissed off at the game regularly. But I want to beat Sonic in the Secret Ring so I can also do Sonic and the Black Knight, which will be, like, a pretty easy, like, one-off stream. Sonic and the Black Knight is... I don't want to say significantly shorter than Secret Rings, but, like, because it's so much easier to play through, it's, it makes for a much shorter playthrough. 
the sword has the same VA as Rila and it haunts you. Think that you would rather watch me play Secret Rings than replay it yourself? I mean, yeah. Like, listen. Secret Rings is pretty bad. Or Black Knight? Fair enough. Black Knight is a better game overall, but... From what I... I replayed it very recently, actually, when I, when I bought it in Secret Rings, and I just thought it was okay. I also think... Uh, like, I would almost even say it's, like, a little overrated. Like, it's fine, and I get why people like it, and I think it has a really good interpretation of Sonic. But other than that, like, the plotline ain't that good. It feels, like, very, like... Like, I don't want to say rushed, but... It feels like it goes by too fast. And I don't know, maybe. I would probably play Original Nights before I'd play Journey of Dreams. We'd have to see. Would recommend the Original Nights into Dreams? Mm-hmm. These halls are tripping me up. Journey of Dreams also has proto Balan Wonderworld platforming levels. Well, I mean, I didn't hate Balan. To be fair. Balan Wonderworld, like, I don't know. In retrospect, it's, like, fine. And I think that's pretty much what I had to say when I streamed it, was that I finished it and I was like, man. This game is okay. Everybody made me think this was like one of the worst games of all time, and actually, no, it's like not even fucking close. It's just the most okay game to ever exist. Can I be honest? I thought I was gonna die there. Honestly, I would even say there were multiple points where I thought Balan Wonderworld was good. If I pre-order Splatoon 3 at Target, I get a pair of sunglasses. Oh shit, I better cancel my GameStop pre-order then. Well, I just, I'm like, you can't get a pair of sunglasses at GameStop. Balan Wonderworld is better because it's less British. True. True. Why was that tunnel full of hot stove tops? For fun. I don't know, I don't regret playing Balan Wonderworld at all. I thought it was a fun, like it, like it was even fun sometimes. There were definitely points where it was kind of a slog. I think like basically any point in that stream where I had to like grind for the one power up just so like platforming wasn't as annoying, like that kind of sucked. 
But, like, in general, like, I don't know. I feel like Bow in Wonderworld, if you have, like, even a little bit of patience, it, it, it's, like, fine. Yeah, I mean, fair. The, the, the farm level is, like... It's amazing how fucking bad of a first impression the farm level is. And I'm glad I'm not the only one who, like, realizes that, like, yeah, that's, like, an insanely bad first impression for the game to, like, lead off on. It gives you, like, the worst possible idea of what the video game is like. You do get to make Balan destroy a giant corn cob, though. Honestly, I never noticed that Balan was holding a plate of corn in this scene. Oh, if I'm metal, I can go on the stoves. But not no more. No! I died. No one knows if Lance made Balan or the world made them most because of translation issues. Well, it's quite simple, really. It's whatever's funniest. That's, a, that's the Morgan rule, is that it's whatever's funniest. Okay, can we talk about how fucked up of a jump this is? This is kind of like, twisted. And they knew, they put a checkpoint back to back. Oh my god. Namco was off their fucking rocker with that one. No! <laughs> if they didn't make me do this right after getting out of a jump. Oh, we did it. Spin dizzy.
I don't know, I think this Yuji Naka guy is pretty trustworthy. I don't know, someone else come up with a joke for me. I thought- I just thought it'd be funny to say this Yuji Naka guy seems trustworthy. Mr. Yuji Naka is all right! You know, that Yuji Naka guy seems like a real class act. I'm just waiting for these clowns to shoot something. Yep, like that. Breaking Bad AU, where Jesse Pinkman is is doing stuff with uh, Yuji Naka instead of Walter White. Yo, Mr. Yuji Naka, I'm like playing your Sonic game, bitch. You know, like adventure to me, bitch. That has to be like a top five worst jokes I've made on the stream. That wasn't- that was like an- that, that was like anti-humor, but not even in a particularly funny way. I don't know, I just wanted to make a joke about Yuji Naka making meth, whatever. Also, yeah, I do remember when he blocked Nyoto Oshima out of a photo. See, when this game is just platforming, I'm, like, pretty good at it. I would say. I don't know. Everybody, can you rate my performance in Pac-Man World? I think- I, I think that the Anubis fight kind of bumps me down in terms of, like, how good I'm doing. But other than that, I think I've been playing pretty great. I- I say as I do that. Okay, so my depth perception isn't perfect, but I'm only human. Anubis fight doesn't count, it's like that for everybody, apparently. This is true. But it's like easier in this version, to be fair. It's even worse in the original. See, that's what I was trying to do. Carnival Maze. It's so weird that for like the first two worlds of this game, I did not see any mazes, and now it feels like we get one like every other level. We slide in. Okay, yeah, I felt like I had to do that loop. Fuck. 
we're close. Okay. We're good. We won. I should play more Pac-Man games on stream. Like the old school style Pac-Man. I bought a couple of them recently during the uh, summer sale. What was it? It was like Pac-Man 256. And there was another one that I bought. I think it was... What's like the awesome version of Pac-Man? The awesome like newer version of Pac-Man that people really like. Your mom got you pa Miss Pac-Man on the SNES because she played that as a kid? Mm -hmm. Where am I, like, going here? You have the US Knights for Saturn and Christmas Knights, but you haven't played anything on Saturn for a while. <laughs> anything I know about the Sega Saturn is because of my good friend Sienna. Like, I, like, other than things that Sienna has told me about the system, I know nothing about the Sega Saturn. It was Pac-Man, it's one of the Pac-Man Championship Editions. That's the one I have. On Steam. Your partner celebrates Saturn Day? Mm hmm Well, I mean, it's gonna be Dreamcast Day soon. Not, not Saturn Day, but we are having Dreamcast Day soon. Nine, nine, everyone. Give it up for Dreamcast. Oh my god, wait, that's when Splatoon launches. Never mind, fuck the Dreamcast. Actually, a Dreamcast is even good. <laughs> Everybody should clip that out of context. You've mostly played the Knights version on Steam, and it's a pretty good way to play the game. Mm hmm I had another checkpoint for that. I got hurt. This gives me a heal. <laughs> I should have bounced on his head. Got baby pack. 
or Paxis. We did it, we saved Paxis. The first cisgender Pac-Man. Wish you could collect more Saturn stuff, but you're not a millionaire. Yeah. You have all the Sonics and some other stuff? Dude, Sonic Jam is, like, pretty expensive, isn't it? Wish you had the Spielberg controller. Is there a Spielberg controller for Saturn? Are we gonna do a race? That's pretty cool. Why is it in first person? I'm gonna lose my mind at this first-person Pac-Man racer. They should have made this into a full game. Dude, could you imagine, like, a Namco racing game? That would actually be kind of, like, sick, though. Where they have, like, a mascot kart racer with all of their old, like... Like... Oh, shit! Thank you, Sophie, it's for the coming! raid! Welcome, everyone! Welcome, Uno fans. I was just saying, like, they, like, Namco Mario Kart with all their, like, old arcade games, that would be dope. And hello! Hello, Sophie. Welcome, everyone. I hope y'all had a good stream. I'm playing New Pac-Man. We're probably gonna beat it all tonight. I'm already at, like, the end of the fourth world. Oh, fuck. Uh, I'm gonna try and pronounce your username. Apologies if I fuck it up really bad. Uh, thank you, Sai Zai Guy Rior, for the follow. I don't think I even came close on that one. I don't think I could have been more off the mark if I tried. Oh, hello, everyone. You get that every stream you've ever been on. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, the power pellet was too good. I like that this machine has, like, the same revving noise as, like, Gary's mod vehicles. What matter of tomfoolery? Hi V, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Too much power, not enough pellet? This is true. I could have been using the pack boost the whole time. You should be able to play this part in VR and no other part of the game? True. True. Are there like any racing games in VR actually? Like, now that I'm thinking about it, is that, like, a subgenre that exists, like, VR racing games? No! Oh my god, I have to catch up so damn fast. Yeah, there's no way we win this. That's too late. I got 7th. Yeah, this is like a racing minigame boss.
Man, I gotta do this again. Why do they get to move first? That's fucked up. Okay, I realize where I fucked up is that I didn't use the mini boosts at all. So that's what we gotta do. Like this. Not like that. Okay, actually not like that. Get high and think of me. Yeah, I'll be streaming for a while longer. I'm probably gonna try and beat this whole game tonight. Just had a drifting system. <laughs> Alright, no problem, V, no problem. Oh shit. At least I fell off with that guy. I'm doing slightly better. This is a slightly better result than we had last time. So we're getting better at the Pac-Man racing minigame. I don't know if we can pull off the W, though. Maybe. It's not impossible. Okay, someone fell, that's good. Yeah, sorry to everyone watching this who gets motion sickness that this suddenly turned into a first-person racing game for no, in ex like, explainable reason. This looks really fun. It's okay. It's no Mario Kart. I really wish it had drifting. That's what I'm missing, is that there's no, like, drifting in this at all. No. No, come on. I lost because of that fall. I actually hate this. Never mind, I take it back. It sucks. <laughs> I got second. Okay, well, th that means third time's the charm, for sure. No, yeah, I mean, like, in a mascot kart racer, like, you probably want drifting. I guess this ain't that serious, but... You know. It feels like it should be there. Cool thing that OBS is doing also. We're back. Okay, I don't know why that happened, but it's fine. God, I am doing... Basically as good as I was doing before, which is not a good sign because I need to be doing better.
This looks better than Eminem's Racing. To be fair, definitely better than Eminem's Racing. Falling down with me, buddy. If I was going down, he was going down with me. <gasps> Wait, guys. We did it. Epic win. Those guys literally got destroyed. They didn't even have to do that. There was no reason for any of them to do that. Alright, we've got two more worlds left. Eight levels. OBS is, uh, doing shit again. Again, like, this has to be the hardest game to ever stream just because the amount of technical issues that have happened during this stream and before this stream is insane. They don't- like, Twitch.tv doesn't want you to see this. They don't want the Pac-Man stream to be real. been a week for technology. This is true. Like how the villain of Pac-Man World 2 is just named Spooky. From Jump Scare Mansion! Everybody knows Spooky. Okay, this is a pretty sick theming. So yeah, we beat Racing V. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> This is, like, the factory levels from, like, DKC. It's giving that kind of vibe. You know, it's it also comes, like, pretty late into the game. out of here. Ow. 
Ow. <laughs> I didn't need to get hit there, I just needed to not hit the pipe. It's that easy. Ow. That's fine. This is like Crash Bandicoot. It is like kind of vaguely Crash Bandicoot-like, isn't it? Ow. <laughs> Jumped right into that. Okay. That guy spawned a little too close to where you spawn. Ow. Okay, they, they can turn to look at you. This is a good thing to note about these enemies, is that they can turn to <laughs> look at you. A good thing to note about me is that I apparently have no depth perception. Yeah, I don't know what's up. My depth perception has just been, like, kind of dog shit through this game. Like, a lot of times when I die, it's just me being like, oh, I couldn't, like, fathom where this is. Relative to the 3D plane. Depth perception is overrated. Well, it's maybe not my favorite thing, but I think it's alright. I'm gonna wait for this thing to go around so we can get the extra life. I fucking hate saying the phrase depth perception, though. You feel a spite for Mr. Bandicoot and not for a normal reason like Activision bad, but because you almost got into the series because you thought Entropy was hot? I have to look up this character. He's like serving like Jafar from Aladdin vibes. Are the uh, projectiles in this game? Yes, they are. Grenade! <sighs> he looks like steampunk Jafar. Yeah. I think like... Listen, I'll, 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 I'll do you a favor and confess something that maybe I shouldn't. I think if, like, I was, like, a furry at all, like, the design of, like, Crash Bandicoot's girlfriend in Crash 4 would be, like, awesome to me. Now, I'm not a furry, so I think, like, I think her design is cool, but I'm not like, whoa, hey, baby. But I do, like, I think the redesign is cool. Ow. Engine is a missile guy. I don't know, I liked Crash 4, I thought it was a fun game, but... Man, do I wish any other company, like, published it aside from Activision. I don't, like, we gotta get Toys for Bob out of there. Didn't they, didn't they, like, send Toys for Bob to the Call of Duty mines? Like, that's what they do now, is help with Call of Duty. Fuck. Yeah. 
They give you a lot of lives in this game. I keep fucking it up. What is Toys for Bob? Uh, they're the division of Activision that worked on the Spyro trilogy as well as Crash 4. It's about time. Which are both things that people generally like. I like Crash 4 a lot. But it's one of those things where, like... They did- they did, they are under Activision. They also made Skylanders. Oh, awesome. Everyone's favorite Skylanders. That's gonna piss off the uh, dedicated Skylanders fandom. I'm sure that Skylanders was fine. I just never, like, I never got into the toys. Like, the, to the games, toys craze. Toys to Life, that's what it was called. I guess I did buy into Amiibo, but I didn't even consider, like, Amiibo Toys to Life. I was just like, oh shit, they gave Ness from Earthbound, like, merch in the West. That's fucking crazy. That's what my thought was when I saw Amiibo. But, like, Skylander, like, that's very obviously, like, just for that game. You know? Like, a lot of games that have amiibo capabilities are, like, playable without amiibos. Stuff like Skylanders is not. If you're playing Skylanders, you need to have the Skylanders toys. I do remember fucked up Spyro from Skylanders. I'm sure Skylanders was, like, fine. It's probably better Incoming! than Disney Infinity. Thank you, Bix, for the raid. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We got a double raid tonight. Hell yeah. Hope y'all had a good stream. Welcome, welcome. Oh, that's a good emote. Hi, welcome. We're playing some good old Pac-Man. Just beat later alligator. Ooh, I've been meaning to play that game forever. I need to play that. I think I might, like, honestly get the physical release for Switch and then stream that. Like, that's what I might do, because it is on- it did get a physical release by Fangamer. <laughs> I forgot that Game Grumps are in later, Alligator. <laughs> See, I knew- I knew what Jen was talking about right away. There's like a there's like a bunch of like YouTuber cameos in Later Alligator, isn't there? I, I'm pretty sure Neil Cisariga is in there, which that's cool because Neil Cisariga is dope. Simply did not perceive them. Fair enough. Yeah, Neil Cisariga is a good guy. He's a cool guy. Creators did guest animations on Adventure Time. Well, aren't the creators of Later Alligator also the people who made Batman and Piter Man? Uh oh. Well. You know what I gotta say after all the technical difficulties we've had tonight? We've still had less technical difficulties than the Germa baseball stream. <laughs> Wait, did I miss Peter? What happened with Peter? Uh, 
past few streams have been all over the place. Holy shit. This is an awesome emo. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I think it's dope. I think the rotating Peter is dope. That's like, that's like the kind of emote I would have. Although, what, what animated emote? We have some pretty good animated emotes, to be fair. I think, I, honestly, out of, out of all the animated emotes, I think that Dinner Blaster is my favorite one. Yeah, do, like, any, any subscribers in chat, feel free to, uh, send some of the emotes we have. Because we got some good ones. I mean, V sent one of the bit emotes we have. The, the ant with bindle is so good. That's, like, an awesome one. <laughs> DKC minecart one is really good as well. Oh god. I think I think like the an like I, I I like finely tuned the animated emotes to appeal specifically to me. You get dinner blaster, you get the minecart, you have Peggle 2, you have Justin Dance, of course. Uh oh. Well, Oh my god, we're back. We did it. I'm back. Pack is back. I really like the blue alien. That's a good emote. The blue alien. I like that. Literally, 1984 is really good as well. This is the factory where they make the ghosts. Is that in the Pac-Man lore? Bogo's Binted is fucking awesome. You made it up. Yo, you would just go on the internet and tell lies about Pac-Man? Come on. Be mature. <laughs> oh, here we go. We're literally- like, Pac-Man misinformation is fucked up. It shouldn't be allowed on Twitch.tv. That was scary. That was scary. Look at Pac-Man. I love that Pac-Man is always wobbling. Ow. Well, I did not see that coming. I also didn't realize that it didn't hurt me just because it was being pounded down. Ow. Yo, 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 yo! Please, motherfuckers! Hey, Pac-Man, what's up? Me, you bitches! I'm high on crack! Wanna free base? No, Pac-Man, drugs are bad. No, 
Help you, mate. Pussies! Wow! Holy shit! That's so good. You only have fucked up emotes for your channel and V has normal emotes? See, I'm, like, I, I, I relate to having fucked up emotes, though. I'm, I'm a channel with fucked up emotes. Although we have good follower emotes. If you, if you, if anyone follows the channel, they can get free doggy emotes. Thank you for recommending the Pac-Man Crack <laughs> Chemical Plant Zone YTPMV. It's great. It is so good. channel doesn't have emotes yet. Yeah, you start getting emotes once you're affiliate. Although it's a much better deal now. I'm thank you for following, Space Circus. Thank you, thank you. Honestly, like, what are you watching could be, like, a global emote, and it would actually, like, work really well. But I'm wondering what I would kick out if I was gonna make it a global emote rather than a follower emote. Because the only problem with follower emotes is that you only- you can only use them on this channel, which sucks. Yeah, they give you the five now. Earlier this year, I did, like, a... Kind of like subathon, the motherfucker Morgan Buxathon, and then I got all the emote slots you can get as affiliate, which I'm still very happy about. And now we have all sorts of like funny emotes. I think that Scout is my favorite emote. I really like sending Scout. <laughs> It's literally time to meet the scout. This game gets, like, a little hard. The, the, these later worlds are, like, testing me a bit more. It's not frustrating, though. I will say that, like, aside from Anubis, this game hasn't been, like, really that frustrating. I guess I got a little frustrated at, like, the race cars. I was a little sad I fucked that up, but... It's good. Oh, shit. Not again. Not again. This is this is the technical difficulty stream. This has to be more technical difficulties than we've had in a long time. But you know what? I've, I've, I think I've been powering through it pretty well. And I've been solving issues as soon as they pop up. It is annoying though. I'm not sure why my internet has been doing this. This is true. The The moral of this stream is that Zavok is 5-1. And immediately it disconnects. Okay. Oh, reconnect. Nope. I'm resetting it. I didn't mean to take that. I did it. I'm back. Let's see if it stays that way. God, I appreciate all of you who are watching who have been, like, extremely patient with all these tech issues I've had tonight. 
You're all the real MVPs. I was about to say, if that was a leap of faith into a bottomless pit... Don't get scared by the shark, okay? I'm trying to stay calm, and you should too. I think we should, like, invent a type of person who doesn't get scared at Resident Evil 7, but gets scared at the sharks in Pac-Man World. How do I become that person? How do I, like, condition myself to get scared of the sharks in Pac-Man World? That's just you. I was, like, stone cold throughout all of Resident Evil 7. I think that anybody who watched that stream can cooperate that and be like, I like I wasn't like scared for nothing. I was so brave about it. Literally not scared didn't jump. They're doing some new perspectives here. Yeah, the camera's not great for this kind of platforming, but it's serviceable. Now I gotta go all the way back around. Come on. Shit. I almost got that guy. Oh well. So we didn't get one complete. Oh, and now the vents hurt you. This is fucked up. Oh my god, I remember when I first became an affiliate on Twitch. We were talking about emotes earlier. The only emote I had on Twitch in 2019 was, um, the uh-oh stinky face. Which I think I just made, like, what did I make it? I made it, like, a tier 2 emote, because I was like, this needs to be sealed away. The, 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 this is this is an emote whose powers should not be used ever again. I don't remember what I even replaced it with. Was it just the Unboxo Man? Uh oh, Stinky was still around in twenty twenty one. I mean, it's still an emote. It's still an emote, but you have to be a tier two sub to use it. I think it was Unboxo Man that replaced it. And then, like, 2021 was, like, a pretty good year for emotes, because Twitch just kept giving us more. Like, Twitch just, like, lowered how much 
how many subscribers you needed to, like, get how many whatever emotes. I mean, the day where they just made it so affiliates get free five emotes, or five free emotes, instead of just the one, was, like, crazy. That was a big day. And getting, like, follower-only emotes, and then getting animated emotes. It, it, it was solid all around. I think, like, it's one of the better things that Twitch has done for, like, smaller streamers is give you, like, a shit ton of more emote slots. Whoa! Yeah, that's the one thing I am sad about, is that I'm, like, pretty happy with the current roster of emotes that I'm like, well, I don't want more, and I don't want to get rid of any of them. So it's just like, I have, I, like, I, I haven't been able to, like, even conceptualize more emotes. Because it's like, it's already perfect. I'd have to see. I think, like, having, like, an emote for, like, saying hello, like, Socks has would be good, maybe? But I need, like, Twitch- Twitch would just straight up have to give me another emote slot, because I'm not sure what I would get rid of for that. I could not tell you, like, if I wanted an emote that's, like, someone saying hi, like, what would be replaced. Need to redraw Las Papitas. I think Las Papitas is awesome, but I understand. Rayman is scarier than this game? Well, Rayman does have the commercial where, like... Well, I won't say it. It's inappropriate. It's- it's below me. It's risque. It's NSFW. Yeah, we can't- we can't speak about the ad because it's against TOS. For nudity. Twitch.tv about to watch this stream and be like, this stream have been shit down for NSFW content. Not smirk emo. It's very sad. It's messed up even. Playing a game in the Persona 5 mask makes a cameo in it. What game are you playing that has, like, a Persona 5 mask cameo? I'm playing Pac-Man. Sonic Forces? What do you mean you don't want to talk about it? There's only so many games it could be. Yeah, I also want to know. You can't just, like, say- like, you can't just say something in chat and then refuse to elaborate. You're playing Persona 5? See, I don't buy that. It's Dandy Ace. Oh, I saw Picasso replay that.
Cult of the Lamb made you want to play more roguelikes? I need to play Cult of the Lamb, honestly. I think that would be a fun stream. Ah, oh, but Fiend Folio just came out, and that makes me want to play Isaac again. I guess Cult of the Lamb is like a roguelike that actually has an ending, though. Like, you play it, and there's a point where you can stop playing it. I think I see what I gotta do. I don't know, a Cult of the Lamb playthrough could happen at some point. Hades is also one that has an ending. Yeah, but I don't want to play Hades because, like... I don't know, it's, it's, the, it's the principle of the matter at this point. Yeah, I'm making- I'm making not playing Hades a part of my personality. Meanwhile, playing Cult of the Lamb, like, no, yeah, I'd play that. I don't know, I've never seen anything from Hades that ever made me want to play the game. If people were going like a Wooga when I play like Hades in chat, all I would say is, where were you when I was playing Super Mario 64 and we saw the, uh, Polygon Mario? Where were you saying Awuga? You could have been saying that for Mario. See, this is what I'm talking about. It really is about the principle of the matter. And, like, listen, you could argue that I would, like... I stream stuff like Fire Emblem, which would normally, like, make Chad insufferable, but also, like, everybody who watches me didn't want to watch me play Fire Emblem, so it was literally fine. It was like every stream was, like, me and, like, two other people chilling. And it was awesome for that. But Hades, like, people actually like that game. It doesn't have, like... People in my audience don't have the preconceived notion of like, oh, but Hades is like doofy and I don't want to watch that. Best part of Fire Emblem was the grass texture glitch. True? I did have fun streaming Fire Emblem Echoes. It kind of did take a little too long, but other than that, I had a good time streaming it. And I, it was nice having, like, sort of a little bit of a more chill chat. No one really talks about it anymore, so it could be peaceful, but you're sick of hearing British people when you play it. Well, no, but, like, everybody would see me stream Hades, and they'd be like, oh my god, Morgan is streaming Hades, I remember loving that game. The nostalgia cycle catches up real quick. Anyways, I don't even want to not play Hades because, like, people would be horny for the characters because that would be petty. The reason I don't want to stream Hades is because it doesn't look fun to me. I've never seen, like, I, anything I've ever seen from Hades gameplay made it look like I would not have fun with it. And that's the- that's the- that's the real scoop. 
is that sometimes I look at a game and it doesn't look fun to me, so I don't play it. And I'm sure Hades is a great game. I'm sure it deserves to be, like, viewed as a modern classic. I just don't care. I'm playing Pac-Man. And he's cool. And he jumps. Look at his hops. You're a sucker for roguelikes because of it now, which sucks because you, when you play roguelikes, you forget to sleep. See, I'm not even like the hugest roguelike person. Like I played Isaac. And that's, like, basically my entire roguelike history, is that I played Isaac. I guess that's a roguelite. What a, like, what's the difference between a roguelike and a roguelite? Is, is roguelike... Rogue-like, just the word for if it has an ending. We need, we need like a genius gamer in here. Yeah, can someone get Joey? Someone call Joey on the phone. Messaging him is also fine. I gotta get out of this level. This level's scary. can save a creature now. I don't know which path person we're saving. I also like that consistently we've been able to save every pack person and pack character, but we- but Puka was the problem. We never saved Puka, and honestly I think he deserves to rot in hell at this point. Like, no offense to the Puka fandom, but also, like, Puka is the character that will not see heaven. Out of- out of the main cast of this game. Puka knows what he did. Alright, that- that little devil knows what he did. And he's atoning for it. I died. That's fine. We have so many- th this game has thrown us so many lives that, like, dying doesn't even feel like a thing to worry about. It was really only a thing to worry about in the Anubis fight.
They gotta have a maze level since it's Pac-Man. This is true. This is very true. Doesn't mean I like it, though. I, I, like, this is my navigation nightmare. First of all, that unlocks the rest of the level. But we can also help a pack person in need. Or can we? How do I get up there? Maybe there's gonna be a way around. Okay. Hey, does this, like, look oddly familiar to anyone else? I feel like we did this already. Oh well. We saved Pac-Boy. Good old Pac-Boy. Uh-oh. It's fine. We reconnected. Fine. End of the level. Oh my god, thank god. That level took forever. That felt like a forever level. Oh, we're getting close to the end. Roguelikes are at its core have gameplay similar to Rogue. Look, most common feature is permadeath combined with top-down or grid movements and procedurally generated levels world. Fire Emblem is almost a roguelike. <laughs> if you had a randomly generated Fire Emblem game. I'm also being facetious, I don't think that would count. Dude, we have to fight the episode of Donkey Kong Country where DK is a metalhead. Metal head, a metal head, a metal head, a metal head. This is literally... Metal DK from the cartoon. I'm a metal head, a metal head, a metal head, a metal head. I'm a metal head. Ow.
What the fuck? Okay, so I thought I would have to make him grab it. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case. Oh. Wait, I just have to go metal. Okay, wait, that actually makes sense. Never mind. I thought I had to, like, make him hit himself into his own bombs. Whoa, OBS disconnected, but reconnection successful. bringing out the big guns now. Okay, we gotta wait for the treasure chests. The treasure chests are the ones that typically have the metal. Right there. This is the guy who made Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. I'll take your word for it. Now. Now's what he's gonna... Wow, I can't speak English right now. Now's what he's gonna... Now, what is he gonna do? Fuck, I just wanna say, now what's he gonna do? Why is that the hardest sentence in the world for me to say right now? It's actually fucked up how much time that took to say. Okay, that boss is pretty easy. Disconnect. Fuck you. Stop with this go, go down, go live shit. At least we got the final world. We just have one more world, guys. We just have to make it through this last world. This has to be the most I've ever fought with my internet to do a stream. I mean, it makes sense that the final world of a Pac-Man game would be, like, haunted mansion themed. It makes too much sense. His, his enemies is literally ghosts. Would I say Pac-Man is having a ghostly adventure? No, because I have better things to say. For example, Pac-Man is yellow and round, and that's cute. This 
game keeps getting scarier. True. I gotta say, also, like, one of the things I can compliment about this game a lot is that the jump feels very good. I rare- like, I've had a couple of times where the depth perception has fucked me up, but I've never felt like doing a jump wrong has really fucked me up. Except that time. Okay, I- I- I say it and then it happens. Also, hi Joey, welcome. We're at the final world of Pac-Man, and it's scary now. Ow. Okay, I think this we just have to wait until it's like... Yeah. I feel like that's probably the strat. It's just wait until the coffins are lined up. Yeah, Pac-Man doesn't fear nothing. He's brave. And we love him for that. He is scared of this, though. Come on! I'm trying something drastic. May that be the last disconnect we suffer from tonight. Pack just can't be beat, but we're so close. We're so close, we have to beat his game. It's the only way to free us from his curse. Like, this has been- like, trying to stream Pac-Man World Remake has been so fucking hexed. We have to win. Otherwise, we'll never be saved. Also, can someone confirm something with me, real quick? Like, has, like... Has, like, Twitch been saving all of these VODs actually, like, as a bunch of VODs instead of just the one? With, like, the intermissions? With the sad guy? Because it keeps resetting how long my session is. Which would make me assume that it's separating it into multiple VODs. Because if that's the case, I'm probably just gonna have to delete all those VODs so it doesn't look fucked up on Twitch. Because otherwise people will be like, what the hell, Morgan streamed 10 different Pac-Man worlds. really is a trooper. We re we respect Pac-Man. Whoa! 
Okay, that was a little fucked up. Actually, the game is a little twisted for that. That was kind of fucked up. Did you guys see that shit? No! What the hell? That's kind of fucked up. That's actually a little fucked up that they do that. Like, I have to position myself in a way where I won't go careening off the edge like that. What the fuck? Am I missing something? What the fuck? Is it actually just that fucked up? Oh, I guess you can, like, tilt back. Like that. Okay. I see now. They haven't really made you do that the whole game. So I didn't even know that was, like, an option I had. It's interesting. Finding new ways to use the role at this point in the game. I got scared. This is a scary level. This game is literally scarier than Resident Evil 7. Honestly. Resident Evil 7, like, the stakes were so low, because that's like the average American family. But this is twisted. This can only be explained as a poltergeist. Coffins fade away and they make a scary noise. Hmm? We did get man. Oh, the lemon was right there. So now we do this. We go up this. 
Also, I didn't, I, 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 I didn't, like, I didn't mention the comment earlier because I was kind of readjusting to being online. Yeah, this kind of just is his Smash Brothers, like, model, isn't it? I guess there's only so much different they could make Pac-Man's model. Like, really, how could they refine it past, like, the Smash Brothers model? Honestly, in my mind, he's already the perfect creature. What is a Pac-Man? It does feel a little strange. You know what is supremely fucked up about it, though, is that this means the Pac-Man Smash model is on PlayStation 5. You needed all those graphics just to play a game with the Pac-Man Smash Brothers model. Oh, I just don't hear anything right now. This is the power of PlayStation 5. You hear audio? Huh, why don't I? There we go. I'm also very pleasantly surprised that we are gonna beat this game in one stream. I did think this was gonna be a multi-stream endeavor, but no. The, the power of my pack love has brought me to the end of the game. After how pissed off I was getting at Anubis, I'm glad I powered through. Like, Anubis is like a low point, and then the rest of the game is like, wait, but this game is like awesome though. Like, actually, I don't really have any sweeping problems with the game. I think there's, like, a couple, like, jumps and such that feel a little bit like trial and error, but they're kept to a pretty big minimum. Also, like, this game just, like, throws lives at you. So, like, there's never been a point where I got, like, a game over in the middle of a really hard level and got pissed off about it. Like, I don't know, this game is, like, fun. Why did this game get kind of, like, destroyed in reviews a little bit? I guess, like, I guess it's, like, a, a little cheap feeling, but I don't know. Like, this game's cool. It can't just be because of Anubis. I refuse to believe that, like, reviewers were, like, giving this, like, sixes and, like, fives just because of Anubis. Too scary for reviewers. The Balan effect? I guess so. I guess it is just like, oh, is like a 3D platformer that's really short, like worth the money? I guess it could be something like that. I don't know. I'd have to actually like read reviews. Like, I'm not that kind of person who gets like tilted about like game reviews that I don't agree with. I'm just more like, man, I usually consider myself like kind of on the cusp of, like, if I like a game, I can, like, still find, like, fault in it and understand why other people might not like it. I feel like I would have a harder time doing that for this game. This doesn't feel like a game that has a lot of, like, sweeping problems. Not to the extent that the Switch version should have, like, a 64 on Metacritic, at least. Okay, I can't... I can't jump on top of these walls. Good to know. Do 
Here's the thing also, like, I could find things that are wrong with Balan, and I could even say I could probably figure out why Balan got as panned as it did. For one thing, Balan Wonderworld, when it launched, was a $60 video game. That's honestly, like, the biggest thing, is that Balan Wonderworld is, like, about as good as, like, a mediocre platformer from, like, the GameCube era. Which is to say, it's, like, the most middling thing in the world, but it's, like, fine. And, like, charging $60 for that, when it also feels very cheap and is not very polished... It's- it's asking a bit too much. And I feel like part of the reason why I have, like, more positive things to say about Balan is, yeah, because I- I got it for free. I got that shit for free. Someone donated it for that. But, like, I'm sure if I, like, paid, like, you know, the 60 for it, I'd be like, what the fuck? Why the fuck did I pay $60 for this game? It's definitely one of those things where, like, Balan is fine as a budget video game. They were not advertising it as a budget video game. They were like, yep, pay $60 for it. It's the same thing why, like, kind of okay Nintendo games get kind of, like, shit on online is because Nintendo charges too much for them. Like, is, like, a budget Mario Golf game really worth $60? Not really. But that's what they charged for it. So they just gotta lie in that bed. I, I, I will say also, like, if, if you're a person who gets annoyed by the fact that Nintendo games never go on sale, like, check out ebay.com. Not that, not that you're gonna get, like, you know, prices you would get on other systems, like, you're not gonna get, like, Mario Odyssey for $10, but you're not gonna get it for $60. You're, like, some of those Nintendo Switch games do get, like, you could get some of them for, like, 30 or 40, and it's, like, it's still quite a bit, but, you know, it's not as, it's not as ludicrous as asking you to pay $60 for every Nintendo game. That's my advice. Yeah, I remember Nintendo Selects. I wish they did that still. I think part of the reason why they don't is because Nintendo Switch cartridges cost a lot more than, like, the cartridges for the 3DS or, uh discs on the Wii U, but, uh, that still sucks. Also, yeah, like, this is specifically talking about, like, newer Nintendo games and not so much, like, DS and 3DS games. That's one thing that, like, has been rough about, like, I've been doing a little bit of 3DS collecting, and, like, you have to, uh, you have to be careful. You have to be a little careful because there are people, like, straight up, like, selling bootlegs. Like, if you see a 3DS game going for brand new at, like, full price, like, if you you see a brand new $40 3DS game, that shit is almost certainly bootleg. Because, like, there's no other reason it would be, like, brand new in the shrink wrap. But I mean, very recently, I got Fire Emblem Awakening again. Because that was, that, like, it's like a little bit of a doofy game. But I have, I have, like, I have a lot of fondness for it because I played it when I was, like, 15. And it meant a lot to me when I was 15. I put so many hours into it, and I know that game, like, back, like, the back of my fucking hand. I should hack my 3DS and install the Gay Awakening hack so I can marry Anna. That's the- that's the- see, that's my trick, Joey. I never play as myself in Fire Emblem Awakening. For one thing, if I- if I- if I named my player ca- if I had, like, a female Robin, and I made my player character named Morgan, 
what the fuck is the deal with the kid? Because, like, the, the, the kid in the game is also named Morgan. So then it would... I guess they would just be Morgan Jr. then. Actually, wait, this is easy. Wait, people just do that in real life. Never mind. <laughs> but I bet Fire Emblem wouldn't know how to process it. They'd probably give the kid, like, some other name. Or they'd just tell you you can't. Some some games do that. If they have, like, a character in the game that, like, has the same name as your avatar, they, they tell you, like, you can't do that. Or is that just Undertale? I don't know what I'm... This is a hell of a tangent. Yeah, I guess like I, I guess like if I just named my player character Morgan in Fire Emblem Awakening, the like my kid would just be like Morgan Jr. I I I I'd teach her the ways of uh I don't know, playing playing Fortnite. That's what the kids like is Fortnite. Yeah, Morgan the second. That's actually way better. Morgan the second, I like that. If Unboxo Man had a child, would they be named Unboxo Mini? I think that Unboxo Man would would want his child to be more independent and wouldn't want him to just like l keep on the Unboxo Man branding. Like, I feel like Unboxo Man would be, like, comfortable if, like, his child, like, never had an interest in unboxing. I don't feel like he's insecure and, like, he needs, like, his kid to be interested in his own hobby. Like, I think he would be happy if his kid just did whatever he wanted. Although Unboxo Boy is really funny, to be fair. It's been, you know, it's been a, it's been a weird year. We haven't had an Unboxo Man appearance all year, haven't we? Not even as like a little like cameo appearance. Like, last year we had him in, uh, Metopia. I guess since I don't do, like, I've been doing the YouTube movie nights for April Fools instead of, like, doing, like, a special bit. But, like, I don't know. I don't know. It could happen. non-binary unboxo man unboxo them this is true unboxo man is the sub icon and intro screen so i guess that would count as an unboxo man appearance his latest appearance Wow, it is fucked up that the picture I took to do the Unboxo Man lag train intro is the only new footage of Unboxo Man in 2022. And then Michael used it to make another intro. This is true, Unboxo Man will appear in the motherfucker Morgan Olympic Games. What am I supposed to do here? <laughs> am I stupid? I might be, to be fair. Wait, can I just like, bounce up? Unbox oh man found footage. One day you're gonna bring a green screen to my house and film unbox oh man bits. Actually, like that would be fun as hell. We could make, like, an Unboxo Man movie. I think that the Unboxo Man movie needs to be, like... I, I, like, I think it needs to be, like, shitty... But, like, on purpose. I think it just makes sense. 
Also, I see now. I gotta bounce up. Again, they're like giving- they're like throwing me curveballs and making me control the game in new ways that I hadn't thought of before. It has to be like stupid Mario Bros. I like vaguely remember stupid Mario Bros. I actually do remember the intro to Stupid Mario Brothers. It, it, it goes something like, Come on, Luigi, come on, Mario, let's go save the day. Rain or hail or sleet or snow, it don't matter the weather. I cannot believe that, like, that unearthed a memory in me that I had thought long gone. See, I remember that. That has to be, like, a thing. I could not have made that up. How we feeling also, final level of the game? I'm thinking I like this remake a lot. Are we talking about- what do you mean? Your question made my internet die. Yeah, that was that was like a thing they did for Stupid Mario Brothers. Was they had like a they did like a video that was like that. Hold on. Oh my god, literally. It exists. Hold on. I hope this doesn't get me DMCA'd for playing stupid Mario Brothers. See? I didn't remember the lyrics properly, though. Wait, I just realized I don't have desktop audio on. That's really funny. No, not the outro. Michael, I will literally send you this video after the stream, but I swear to f fucking god. I'm also, like, very surprised that the creator of Stupid Mario Brothers has, like, a hundred thousand subscribers. Like, when I was a kid, I thought it was, like, the biggest thing in the universe. I thought that stupid Mario Brothers creator would have, like, at least 500,000. Oh my god. Fucking OBS, you stupid piece of shit program. It was going so good for, like, a half hour. Hmm. <sighs> See, if I wasn't literally at the end of the game now, I would, like, I would have given up. 
on this stream by now, but, like, I'm so determined now. Because it's like, we're right there. I can see the ending being dangled in front of me. Who's playing jo what JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? What? JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R demo version. When the hell did they make a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure game? That like took me the fuck out. I just saw it in, in like... I, at, at like the top of my screen, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It came out on Friday. There was a JoJo game in the 90s. Of course. Well, yeah. I have a lot of my friends set like that. You're my friend. I think, like, literally, I, I, I added, like, the best friend to everyone who I had in Burger Time Server. I think that's what I used the best friend feature for, was to keep track of who was in Burger Time. Oh my god, now that I have money, I have to buy Burger Time Party. Use your best friend button to indicate your wife. Oh! Oh. I said I did that noise as OBS decided to fuck off. This is the hardest stream I've ever done in my life. Michael, I do vaguely remember you being into the idea of get me getting the Capcom fighting game collection for Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Someone you know's entire front of their stove fell off in their dorm and it was being held up by packaging tape. You're getting it? Ooh. I don't know. If the price was right, I would get it. But I don't think I would pay $40 for it. I, I thought that because there was more level down there, I could do that. Wait, what do I do then? This is like the end of the level too. There's the end. The new JoJo fighting game is a deluxe version of the one on PS3. 
I didn't know there was a JoJo PS3 game. What do I do to get down there without dying? There's a JoJo PS4 game. Did they make a JoJo game on the Wii? This is the only thing that matters to me. The PS3 one that got remade is actually good because it's a 2D fighter and the PS4 one is an arena fighter. There's no JoJo games on the Wii, this is so sad. Oh wait. I see. Now I can go down. This has to be, like, the last section. I guess not. This is the last section. Yeah, I would only be interested in JoJo if it was on the Wii or Wii U. This is true. It's a work of art, Jojo on the Wii. Everyone's invited, Jojo on the Wii. That's true, I'm only interested in games that I can play on, like, the Wii. <laughs> That's it. I can play Donkey Kong Jungle Beat on the Wii and he punches guys really fast like in JoJo. I should play J Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. I heard that game was actually like pretty good. I can play Yakuza on Wii U, let's fucking go. I should play Jump Force. I wonder how- what the Jump Force prices look like in a world without online. Knight's Journey of Dreams on Wii. You're not my wife. Jump Force is still $20, brand new. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I didn't save Pac Mom or Puka, and I think that's acceptable. I think that that is like, yeah. If I was gonna not save anyone, it would be Puka and Pac Mom, because that's not Miss Pac Man. Man's lair. Oh my god, guys, we're at the end. Also, yeah, it is on. Oh, it is nearly 1 a.m., but that's fine. Yeah, Namco doesn't own Miss Pac Man anymore. Which is why I will not be speaking to Pac Mom. Hello, everyone, he's arrived. Our hero, the one and only Pac Man. 
Hey, uh, looks like it's my turn. Here's Pac-Man. Ah! Wow, it's Pac-Man! Aw, oh, shit, here comes Pac-Man. I mean, I don't know if we could have a very in-depth conversation about stupid Mario Brothers, because basically the only thing I could remember is the intro. This ends right here, right now. Aw oh, shit, here comes Talk Man. I gotta be better about dodging his bullets. Um, give me a heal. Um, give me a heal. <gasps> Pack buddy! I knew that saving you was the right idea. <laughs> we should we should do a movie night on stream where we watch all of stupid Mario Brothers. <laughs> Did the dog call him master? I guess it did, to be fair. But it's also like an animal. We can't? Why can't- There's a shit ton of copyrighted music. Alright, we'll do a stream on YouTube. We won't do it on Twitch. For every pack family member you get, you get a free heal. You can't call it the Baldi server. <laughs> There's an entire segment in this one episode where they're doing a choreographed dance. Yeah, this is kind of baby town with the with the pack people helping us. Why don't I want to call it the Baltimore Basic Server? Because it's, it's just the private stream Discord. That's what it, that's what I call it. I don't call it the Baldi's Basic Server. That's never what I've called it. Well, I know I made the title when she played Baldi's Basics. But I just made it that title because I didn't know what else to call it. I'm gonna die. Despite all, despite all the pack people helping me, I'm still gonna fucking die. Yep. Smoking that shit that made Baldi basic? True. This is like the final boss in a hat in time. God, when he do does the rocket shit, it's so hard. You were all Pac Men. Ow. Oh my god, the rocket is so hard. You can dash out of the way? I guess that's true. I can just do that. Wait. Wait. This fight is actually so much easier. You can dash out of the way and you can dash into him. Talk man, you fucked up.
the pack, baby. There we go. You were playing, re replaying a hat in time. You hadn't played it since it came out. I hope you've been enjoying it. I like a hat in time a lot. A hat in time switch port is rough. That is not a good port at all. I mean, it's like playable. But, like, even, like, I've had it crash a decent amount. <laughs> and that's not great. I don't know if we beat him this attempt, but we're close. Did I do it? <gasps> uh oh. I did not. This is a gauntlet. I'm dead. Okay. Well, we have the strat now. Rolling into him is so crazy effective. This is new. Mm hmm Okay, first heal. We have we have four heals for this fight. The last phase is new? That's cool. First phase down. Okay, now we just gotta avoid him. You know, they never really make good use out of you throwing the pellets in this game, huh? Why is that a mechanic? I've played through this entire game and I never had to use it once. Professor Pack. This game could be considered scarier than Goosebumps. It really could. Since we didn't save Pac Mom, Pac Man could be considered one of the gayest games. Not like this, man. Oh, wait. That was backup options.
Guys, I shit you not, I heard the fucking windows noise and instinctively, like, unplugged the adapter because I thought it meant that the stream went down when it didn't. So I made the stream go down for no reason. Why do you go back up so fast? I guess he'll drop another metal pellet, so it's fine. But still, die quicker. Ow. Pack baby. Ugh, I'm running out of heals, so I think I have one more. It is cool that, like, the more pack people you save, the easier this final boss becomes. That's neat. I like that. I think it's cool when games give you tangible rewards for going out of your way for things, even if I never do it, because I hate saving people. You attack one of his... Whoa. What the hell is that? Pac-Boy, help! What the fuck is he doing? He's like doing wheelies and shit. every time no come on god fucking damn it that just hurts I hate the dash attack it's so fast Oh, I already used my first heal. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. First phase down. We have three heals. If we can go through the metal phase without taking much damage, I think this is honestly the easiest phase to not take damage on. can do this. I got five hits on this fucker. 
Also, by the way, everyone at Spectrum go to fucking hell. <laughs> Actually, like five hours into the stream, it has not gotten any smoother. I hate all internet service providers. Okay. Not a hit I wanted to take. I was hoping I could go through second phase damage list. Okay. We only took one hit the entire second phase. foot. Wait for him to fall. Climb up. We have- we have three heals still. Okay, do it again. Professor Pack heals us this time. We have two more heals and only one more hit after this. Double damage! <gasps> Guys. Oh my god. Get the fuck out of here. Doesn't anyone ever root for the ghosts? Pac-Man's just staring at him. Hold on. Okay, no, it's fine. <laughs> he just ate him. Pac-Man doesn't give a shit. Well, Puka got rescued. Pac Mom is probably like, why didn't my husband save me? Oh, goodbye, Orson. All my real friends in this world. Fuck you, Puka and Pac Mom. He's also in Pac Man World 3, where he's friends with Pac Man. Mm hmm. Pac-Man made it to his birthday! Happy birthday, Pac-Man.
That was fun! Yeah, his life is unruined. That was a good remake. I liked that a lot. Oh, wait. I can play it! <gasps> it's like regular Pac-Man. Whoa. I'm so glad they have a cheesy vocal track at the end of this remake. This is what it was missing, honestly. This is what Pac-Man was always missing. Man, yeah, this game is dope. This is an awesome remake. I like this a lot. Just like really fun throughout. I, again, I don't really think I have any like major sweeping issues with this game. I think like Anubis kind of sucked. Anubis was a little ass. And like, I imagine that maybe going for completion isn't like super fun. I feel like this game, it's not as, like, in hallways as something like a Crash Bandicoot, but I feel like it would be not super fun to 100% for similar reasons as Crash Bandicoot is for me. But I also don't like 100%ing, like, any game, so, like, that that's almost like a moot point. But yeah, this remake's really good. I had, a, I had a lot of fun with it. I'm glad after like a week and a half, I finally got the time to play it. And like, again, like, thank you all for your patience throughout this stream. We had a lot of technical issues. Um, I'm gonna see what I can do to fix it before the next stream. And we'll go from there. Um, tomorrow I think we're gonna do Sonic and the Secret Rings. Maybe not, we'll see how I'm feeling when I wake up in the morning. I might just decide fuck it and do something that makes me less sad. But if... If the plan sticks, we're doing Sonic and the Secret Rings tomorrow. But yeah, dope remake. Pac-Man World is awesome. I hope that we get more Pac-Man World remakes. Just really solid all around. I miss the G. Who's right in front of me? Pac is literally the man. I, I, like, especially for, like, a PS1-era platformer, this game plays great. I mean, it's a remake, obviously, but, you know. Just really good. Really good. I had a good time. But, that is gonna be it for tonight's stream. I want to thank you all for coming. Hope you'll have a good night and take care. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow for, uh... Probably Sonic and the Secret Rings, but maybe I won't be up to it. I don't know yet. We'll see how I feel tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.